Bills. Where the stores take cash, credit, or gold bullion. Even the poodles drink bottled water. If you want the best here, it'll cost you. But the best pizza won't cost you. You can get the Rodeo Drive of pizzas. A Pizza Hut pizza. Just $8.99 every week this fall. Right now, it's the big New York pizza. It's humongous. Just $8.99. So feed your maid, chauffeur, and supermodel girlfriend for just $8.99. Can we eat in here? Only at Pizza Hut. Make it a meal with breadsticks, wings, and a Pepsi. Pizza Hut, the best pizzas under one roof. Oklahoma Sooners, we are proud of you. We are red, white, and true Sooner fans at Powers Nissan. Come into Powers Nissan now through October the 13th wearing any Sooner apparel, a hat, a shirt, anything, and we'll give you a $1,000 Darbuck that can be applied to the purchase of any new or used car, truck, or van in our huge inventory. And new low interest rates means lower payments. Wear your Sooner apparel and get a $1,000 discount now through October the 13th only at Powers Nissan of Midwest City. We're right on the corner and always right on the price. Go Sooners! You'll find a whole store full of savings during the fall savings sale at Brahms. Save on all of your favorite flavors of ice creams and frozen yogurts. Any two half gallons for just $7. And our 51 ounce meat or cheese lasagna, just $6.99 each. And from our bakery, cookies are on sale. And all breads are 99 cents a loaf. All of this and much, much more on sale now at your neighborhood Brahms ice cream and dairy store. Together we stand. Wide open! It's hot! Touchdown! This is College Football on ABC Sports. Down Texas way, there's a border war known as the Red River Shootout. And for the first time since the 84 tie, this game features two top five teams. A year ago, Oklahoma destroyed Texas 63 to 14. And afterwards, the Sooners preened in front of the scoreboard. Chris Sims and his Texas teammates insist it won't happen again. I had to stay circling on my calendar for a year. And now the day is here. They scored 63 points on us last year. Not today. Not today. With the State Fair of Texas as our backdrop, the SBC Red River Shootout unfolds in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. It's Oklahoma and Texas. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger along with Gary Danielson. Well, every year on the journey to the national championship, there are a few games that define the road. Folks, we have reached the first fork in our highway win today and you control your destiny lose today and you need a lot of help and gary this is a tale of two quarterbacks uh, you're right brent and let's start with texas and chris sims he's got all the measurables the arm strength the feet the size that everybody loves it's that elusive it that some quarterbacks have the elways the montanas his dad phil had it it's games like this in oklahoma that chris can make his mark because that's all he's lacking the other side, Oklahoma, Nate Hibble, he proved last week against Kansas State that he has it. He's tough. He's courageous. His team loves him. But does he have all the measurables and talent to beat a great Texas team? It's a fascinating matchup. Let's join our PA announcer, Bob Cole. Now, ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Dr. Kevin Sunfall, the eyes of the
from the UT Navy ROTC. Please stand as University of Texas Director of Bands Jerry Junkin leads us in our national anthem. on a Saturday afternoon as the Sooners and the Longhorns are ready to get it on. The flags are back up. They're playing football again. And thousands of people are once again experiencing the simple joy of buying a new car. And GM is helping with interest-free financing on every car, truck, and SUV, now through October 31st. Keep the dream alive. Keep America rolling. I am very proud of my lawn. We enjoy it as much as he does. Our neighbors usually ask me what I use, and I tell them. You know, I use Scott's winterizer. He really cares. When you apply it in the fall, the food actually enters the root system. It stores it over the winter. And then in the spring, it perks that grass right up. It explodes, basically. Obviously, it's a critical step. He's tried other products, too. They just didn't work out. Scott's winterizer gives me the last green lawn in the fall and the first green lawn in the spring. No one spoils me like Mom does, but Olive Garden comes close with their never-ending pasta ball. They make all these fresh, delicious homemade sauces, and then you pick which ones you want with which pastas for $7.95. You get all you want, too, just like at Mom's house. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Tonight, ha! you're the sleepover bandits. They're breaking into theaters for a special sneak preview. Just give us a little bit of the money. No, good manners are no excuse for criminal behavior. I'm stumped. Bandits, rated PG-13. Starts October 12th. Sneak preview tonight. Look, I know Circuit City's doing this expo thing, but we're busy. Get what you need. We're out of here. Agreed? Yes. We know how you feel. It's Expo 2001. 30 days of non-stop demonstrations of what's hot and what's next in electronics. September 30th through October 31st. Circuit City, we're with you. Our sellout scene here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Jack Aru is up inside that famous tunnel. And uh, Jack, any trash talking up there between the two teams? No, Brenton, no surprise. Almost workmanlike. Both teams came out of the tunnel and spilled out into what I think may be the most incredible crowd that I've ever witnessed for a college football rivalry. Why? Well, it's a neutral site. They split the field right down the middle. Crimson and cream on one side, the burnt orange on the other side. And as you said, with the Texas State Fair as a backdrop, there's a couple hundred thousand people wandering the grounds. Don't even have tickets to this game. I'll tell you what, I've done every major college football rivalry in the country. My first visit here, I'm pumped up and ready to play. Well, you know this man is pumped up. He's never been beaten by a top 10 team. And here he comes again, coach of the defending national champion, Oklahoma Sooners, Bob Stoops, who has done a remarkable job in his third year. And across the field, well, a man who needs to win a big game at a big school, Mac Brown, his fourth year. 
He has recruited some of the best classes in the country over the last few years, and now they must step it up on the field. Mac Brown's Longhorns will get the ball to start the game. Victor Ike and Irvis Hill with Duncan kicking it off for the Sooners. Underway in Dallas. And Sims will have it on the 20-yard line as he brings it out. We asked Chris Sims about the first series against Oklahoma today. Uh, I hope we can come out and, and run the ball on them effectively enough and then, uh, you know, do a few things off of that. You know, a few play action passes and, and uh, you know, just be patient. Take, take what they give us. It's a great defense. They're very disciplined. And, uh, you know, we, we can't force much. So Chris dashes out with the play from the sideline. The one back. Ivan Williams behind him to start the game. Bo escapes the tight end number 80. Chris puts Williams to the 26-yard line. That's a six-yard gain, and now it's time for our Burger King lineups. Ivan Williams, now what he must do besides run the ball is also blitz protect when the Sooners come. That's something the young man had to work on. The offensive line, and they will be concentrating on the freshman phenom number 97, Tommy Harris. They must stop him. The Horns think he, Harris, is their best defensive lineman. Down now on second and four. Will they put Williams in play? They do. Slash reaches out for the first down at the 30-yard line with Lehman making the stop for this OU defense. And here is Tommy Harris, number 97. Only a freshman starts in that defensive line. The linebackers you know about. Rocky Kamas rocked Sims last year with an interception which returned for a TD. But Brandon Everidge can't fight on play action. Chris Sims thinks before the game is over he can get something deep against the safeties. Third down and short with Cedric Benson and it is Sims bucking ahead for the first down. If you're going to try to win this football game, the start is so important. The Pontiac game solutions, the two matchups. One team cannot allow the other team to get a big lead because both teams want to have balance, run and pass, yards after catch, playmakers at wide receiver and running back, and Brent, anytime you have two even teams, we know kicking game usually decides it. Four wide and Victor Ike into the backfield. The coaches like what they see of the offensive line so far. Short drop, he's now completed two in a row, but that one not much of a gain as Roy Williams came up and got all over B.J. Johnson. There is a great safety, number 38 for the Sooners. Well, I think that's the key to the ball game for Texas. They want to control the two safeties. Everidge and Williams are both big-time tacklers. Kansas State did a great job of that last week with the option play and play-action passes. Texas said they want to do the same, control those two guys where they line up with formations. It's been two tight ends for most of the game for Texas. Williams back. Sims needs time. The young Williams breaks the first tackle. This will put the Horns in third and long. Guess who? Tommy Harris. Beat the block right up the middle. The freshman, number 97. He is such a low. Cuts it. There's cutoff try by the center this time. Matthew Anderson, look at that. Can't get him. And Brent, every high school player that played against that guy last year in high school, I'd go back and watch films of. They might be some good players that didn't get recruited because they couldn't block him. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Here's your third and long now for Sims and the Horns, who stay four wide. They need to reach the 41-yard line. Penalty flag is down. There is a penalty flag throw. Brian and Snap. Ball start offense. Five yards. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Brenton, the Coors Light update. What a finish in the SEC. Tennessee had grabbed the lead late in the last minute. Georgia comes right back. David Green, six yards to Veron Haynes. 1980 was the last time Georgia had beaten Tennessee in Knoxville. Brent. Big win for Mark Rick. John in his first year between the hedges. After the penalty, 
It is really third and long. He needs all of 15 here. 15, 16 yards to get his first down. He'll throw it to Williams on the screen. No, they will be forced to punt. Corey Klein making the stop for the Sooners. Mac Brown and Greg Davis came out conservatively. They do not want an early turnover to destroy their balance in the football game. Not surprised that that was a lot of fluff and a little easy pass to the wide receiver. Brian Bradford's a young punter. Curtis Fagan is set to return this punt. He's the junior from Houston. Feels it at the 36-yard line. And coming down hard. So the horns with great punt coverage. Timeout. The flags are back up. They're playing football again. And thousands of people are once again experiencing the simple joy of buying a new car. And GM is helping with interest-free financing on every car, truck, and SUV now through October 31st. Keep the dream alive. Keep America rolling. Play Cash is King at Burger King for your chance to become a millionaire. First class, baby. Hey, how much for that dog? What's up, dog? Who wants to marry a millionaire? <laughs> this is not what I had planned. Play Cash is King at Burger King. Peel for a chance at great prices. From hot, tasty food like a Whopper or Croissant Sandwich to a cool million bucks. With a one in three chance to win, the odds are on your side. Pardon me, would you happen to have some extra ketchup? <laughs> By all appearances, I'm a server. But look deeper, and you'll see that I'm an entire company. A direct one-to-one -one relationship that adds value instead of cost. I'm just the part of the company you'll be looking at when you realize that I'm not just another pretty face. I'm a better way of doing things. Enterprise systems that are easy to build, easy to own, easy as Dell. Dell PowerEdge servers use Intel Pentium 3 Xeon processors. Desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Goodbye, babe. There's a better way to soothe your skin. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm. More evolved skin care. Oscar winner Robin Williams. Oscar winners Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. And Mini Driver. Viewer discretion advised for goodwill hunting. ABC Tonight, 8, 7 Central. defending champions to go on the attack and here is Nate Hibble brings the play out from the sideline and he completes a high percentage ball but there's a penalty flag it's his running back, Griffin. So we asked Kibble what he wanted to accomplish here in the first series. If you can make first downs, regardless if you can't punch in the end zone or kick a field goal, then you've won the field position battle. And that's huge in any big game. And, uh, you know, making first downs, we'd love to score. And, uh, you know, you, you just don't want to make the big mistake. So Hibble and the Sooners are hurt by that holding penalty here. So it's a big mistake. And that's exactly what he didn't want to do on the first drive. Getting that behind the down to distance first and 20 like that. First down, 20. Start this game about the clock, I believe. Four wide for the.
the center. Sideline to sideline. Inside shuttle pass is blown up beautifully by Marcus Tubbs, the sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. And our Burger King lineup for the Sooners. And the only question we have about Antoine Savage, who made those two big catches against K-State, is how is the ankle after a week? The offensive line, Frank Romero, the All-American headed for the NFL, well, he'll have a huge payday starting next year. One of the best in the country. Now second and 25. It's a 3-4 look with a nickel by the Texas defense. And Hibble. It is complete. As Mark Clayton breaks free. Just short of a first down by a couple of yards. Picking up 23 before Derek Johnson. The fabulous freshman linebacker from Waco, Texas, brings him down, but a huge gain for the Sooners. And what was it? Yards after catch, an easy throw. Zone for Texas right here. Here's Lewis right here bluffing, but watch how he drops out. Just an easy zone. Hipple takes the easy throw, five yards, but yards after catch, Texas must tackle. If they don't tackle these athletic receivers, Oklahoma will have a field goal. From the 49-yard line. Hibble for the first down. Oklahoma in Texas territory against this Texas defense. Corey Reddy can go from side to side. Number 40 came as a linebacker, now a defensive end. And the linebackers, Derek Johnson, they changed their defense just because you got to put me in, coach. The freshman is that good. And over there on the corner, number six, Quentin Jammer, go ahead. Just throw it at him. Just try me. And Johnson gets ready with a first down for the Sooners. Here's Griffin. Nice tackle by Derek Johnson, number 11. Oh, boy. Here's a guy, sometimes you have to beg the coach to play with your, when you talk to him, coach, put me in, put me in, as you said, but this time, he's just such a great football player. There's nothing but Carl Reese, defensive coordinator for Texas, could do, but find a way to get this guy on the field. By the way, another one of those guys, you better check the film of high school to see who couldn't block this guy. Can you imagine those two players playing high school ball just a field a, a year ago? Ian Harris. Second down and eight. Hibble in trouble, drops it off without anybody there. Texas wants grounding. They wave it off and call it incomplete because of the Thornton pressure. The play was immediately disrupted, and it is third down and eight. Head referee this time, which is right behind Nate Hibble in this picture. See if you see him here. Yes, there he is, said he was out of the pocket as he threw it, out of the tackle box area. To, to, which prevents an intentional grounding play. I saw him point to the ground. He made the play, made the indication that he was outside the pocket. That was here. Right there. Another big play by 11. Johnson landing back toward Thornton. Third down. Hibble. Flush to the right. Throws long and incomplete. Had Griffin working the sideline that time, but also Dakari Pearson, the free safety from Dayton, Texas, who plays in the nickel, was there defensively. You'll see Texas in this look right here, the defensive secondary. There's about eight of them, counting linebackers who once were safeties in high school. And look at the zone. They all have their eyes on Nate Hittable, the quarterback. There's really no one open. Kibble has to break to his right and try to find someone on the run. Both defenses controlling the game so far. Jeff Ferguson is looking for his 10th punt down inside the 20-yard line if he can nail it in. But into the end zone, it'll come out on the 20, a break for the Longhorns. Chris Sims and the Horns will have the ball for the second time. Time out. Why don't you get us something to cool this fire down? I got just the thing. 
you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. That's, that's not that bad. The flags are back up. They're playing football again. And thousands of people are once again experiencing the simple joy of buying a new car. And GM is helping with interest-free financing on every car, truck, and SUV now through October 31st. Keep the dream alive. Keep America rolling. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, Call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. as he settles in here first and ten. Now trying to get the running game going and they do with Williams and he's cut down after about three yards by Teddy Lehman. Let's take a look at what both of these teams are trying to do in their offensive systems. Texas wants to run the ball with power. The next phase of their offense is pocket passes with Chris Sims. Their finesse plays with draws and quick, quick screens and very little play action passes. Oklahoma does not even have a power running game. Finesse is what they like to do with those quick screens, pocket passes, and very little play action. Lehman showing blitz. Kalmus takes him down at the 10-yard line as Lehman jumped in, and Kalmus had a free alley. Brent, when we walked into the Texas offensive meeting room, we saw every blitz that Oklahoma had run, and about 10 of them was this cross action between the two linebackers. Teddy Lehman, number 11, will come in and draw the blocker, and then Kelmus gets freed up for the quarterback. That should be picked up. That was accounted for by either a back or the offensive lineman. That's not an extra man. That is a bust on the offensive line. That's an eight-yard loss. And remember we said, Williams must account for the blitz. This is third down and 18. Line of scrimmage is clean. Williams, first down, Longhorns. Lehman had to come back and help out against Roy Williams, the sophomore from Odessa, and what a dandy prospect he is. Third and long, you run the deep comeback. This ball was thrown like a laser by Chris Sims. And Williams, he looks like a linebacker. He runs like a sprinter. He's got the size of a basketball player and the heart of a football player. He's got the whole package, but the ball was perfectly thrown. On third and 16, that is 23 yards for the Horns. Complete. That's the first incompletion of the game, and it was Teddy Lehman rocking the wideout that time. First and ten is brought to you this quarter by Pontiac. The offensive line for Texas, they, they busted that one stunt by the linebackers. You mentioned all the running backs involved in that, but so far the protection for Chris Sims has been much better than I remember last year when I watched Chris Sims in these football games. 
of Mike Williams, the right tackle, the coaches told us, is having a terrific year. All-American type on that right side. And again, the line of scrimmage clean. There's Williams. Got it again for a first down. And here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. They've been raving about number four for two years. And that's 18 more yards for him. Oklahoma studded from this side of the team with their linebackers. There's no linebackers in the picture. There's the throw high into the face mask. Exactly how you teach it for the crossing route. And if you've got guys coming, look, Chalmers is coming. Everidge number seven is coming. There should be holes. The zone blitz has holes in it. Texas offensive line did a great job of picking that up. Sloan Thomas is off to the left. Williams. Penalty flag. And we're going to get a holding up front. About a three-yard gain. Holliman, the defender there, but Gary uh, says this one is coming back. Well, here's our Monday night game, and uh, folks, Gary Danielson is going to be uh -oh. there in his office. Why, I ask you, <laughs> why would you go watch that route? The last time the Rams played in the Silverdome, their Super Bowl year, the Lions beat them. That was the preseason. Well, they didn't have much of a coach. Oh, oh that's right. I was thinking <laughs> for, for a real team. I forgot. I <laughs> The Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Back down on the field. Pleasure to be here with Gary. The State Fair of Texas. Some half million folks coming in and around and through and back out. We are told here in the next 24 hours or so. First down and long. The Sims against the Sooners now. There's a penalty flag before the snap. So the Longhorns are backing up all of a sudden. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Pontiac, what would you do with some Pontiac excitement? Discover card for the slightly smarter consumer. And SBC, we are on it. Well, that time, they caught the Sooners jumping into the neutral zone. So the Horns get five back. And now it's only 15 for the first down. And you better believe they'll try to account for these wide receivers after they've had a look at Sims' arm here in the early going. They're going to bring it again. No! A great sack that time by the center defense at the 45. The speed man, Jimmy Wilkerson. Well, John Saunders, what about Colorado and Kansas State? Did the Buffaloes hold on? Well, Brent, as you know, Kansas State scored 37 points last week in a loss to Oklahoma, but against Colorado, nothing. That's Craig Oaks, 23 yards to Daniel Graham, and Kansas State loses for the second straight week, 16-6. Brent. And, John, in two weeks, Colorado heads down to Austin for what could be a huge game in the Big 12. Draw play, Williams, and again, that Sooner defense. Led by Dvorak that time, another freshman, number 94, ready for the task. And uh, remember this defense, folks, last year, how about the month of October that the Sooners enjoyed? Scoring 63 on Texas here in Dallas. Then going up to Kansas State, Manhattan, and winning that. Then going back to Norman and beating Nebraska. No team in history ever had a better October than the Sooners did a year ago. Maybe some teams with one is good, but none better than that. And then they kept the Seminoles of Florida State out of the end zone in the national title game. That's how good this defense is. The pocket open. Intercepted. Picked off by Wolfolk. So the coaches move number 17 just to defense this week. They didn't want him playing both ways. He picks the Sims pass, and now the Sooners with a golden opportunity. This was zone coverage. Watch the linebackers drop out. Read Chris Sims' eyes. Wolfolk that time backs up. There was no one in the flat. He has the short flat. Chris tried to stuff it in there, threw it slightly behind that time. Really a poor throw that time for Chris Sims. Should have led the receiver downfield much further. 
didn't feel that that corner would drop into that coverage and threw one that that Oklahoma defense gobbled up in zone coverage. Now the Sooners with a golden opportunity inside the 25. The Bulls incomplete. Griffin was covered by Redding coming out of the backfield. Yeah, that, that's and a, you could see Redding's speed that time dropping off the defensive line. That's a nice change up they're doing. Now remember, Texas has moved a lot of people around in this defense to give them speed. The two defensive ends, Thornton and Redding, are really grown-up linebackers who are putting their hand out. They are peeling. When Jammer comes out of the backfield, the defensive ends are peeling with him and covering him on those wide, wide streaks. Griffin on that delayed handoff, and Texas jumps the play, and again, number 40, Redding, right there. So next Saturday, college football, we get a doubleheader at noon Eastern, and you'll see top-ranked Miami take on those Seminoles of Florida State from Tallahassee, then at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, Washington against UCLA, or Wisconsin, Ohio State, and then on the West Coast, you've got the San Diego UNLV game. Uh, you think Oklahoma has to get it to Trent Smith, number 88, that big tight end. He's got a good matchup over there. He's to the right side of the formation every time. They need 12 for the first down. Hibble throws high and incomplete into the end zone. And there was no dead eye as Damian Mackey was the intended receiver, but Nathan Basher, a corner who's been switched to safety, as Texas went to more speed, the defensive backfield in on him. Here's the big tight end, Trent Smith. Oklahoma found Trent Smith late in the game against Kansas State. Here he is again, wide open. I think that matchup is a matchup that will work for them. At Pearson, number nine, the backup corner that had Smith on that play. Now Duncan, he will attempt a 42-yarder with White holding. And he's still in a rut. So Duncan's kicking slump continues. Timeout. Well, the network's down. Bagel. And bagels. Glow for bagels. Hey guys, can I come? Give him bagels. Okay. Network's down. Bagel. Okay. Need a reliable network that keeps everything working? SBC. We're on it. We have got to cut cost, people. Ideas. We could open an account on FedEx.com, save 10% on online express shipping. Okay, how about this? We open an account on FedEx.com. We save 10% on online express shipping. Uh, that's 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 that is wonderful. You just said the same thing I said, only you did this. No, I did this. Mm -hmm. Makes all the difference. Bingo. That's good. Right on the nose. Yeah, that's really good. He's escaping. The chase is on for the most lethal criminal in the universe. There's never been anything like what I have become. And when the clock hits zero, he's crossing over to our world. 30 seconds! Jet Li is the one. Rated PG-13. Opens November 2nd. Marshall Fox sparks the Ram offensive machine. The Lions look for new QB tied Denver to get them in gear. Rams, Lions, Monday Night Football at 9, 6 Pacific on ABC. Alone with his thoughts, having missed five of six, including that one a short time ago. The one he did make was a big one. It wound up being the difference against Kansas State last week when we were up at Norman. And he'll get another chance before this one's over. Now, neither team has been able to generate any running game. And you can see why. The defenses are so tough. Texas had a minus four. Now make it minus three after that one-yard gain. Oklahoma hasn't rushed for a yard yet. Brent, neither team is very committed to running the ball either. Yes, you're right. The defenses are tough, but if you don't have a strong commitment, you're using three, four, five wide receivers almost every down. It's going to be tough to run it against these guys. Look at that. 
One back, three wide receivers again for Texas. Of course, Oklahoma doesn't even try it. Second down for Sims and the Horns. Before the snap. So the play is stopped here, and we've got our fifth penalty of the afternoon. Scoreless in Dallas. Let's check in with Jack O'Rourke, Jack. Well, Brent, there's been a lot of rivalries in this Red River shootout. Let's take you back to 1963. Number one ranked Oklahoma against number two ranked Texas. They dubbed it the game of the century, but it was Texas tailback Tommy Ford behind Tommy Nomis. Novus, they gave the Longhorns a 28 to 7 upset. And then number one, Oklahoma. And Texas went on to win the national championship that year. Yeah, there were a lot of teams came in here committed to the run. <laughs> These two have not been on that team, so there was. Texas is going to stick with it. Williams breaks it free. There is the best run from scrummage in the game. And that can change things if they can get Ivan Rowland. Wilkerson forced to back up from his defensive end spot to make the stop. Talking to everyone for Texas. Mac Brown, Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. Chris Sims, the offensive lineman. Even the people that listen to talk radio in Texas around here, which are the rest of the experts. They all say Texas has to run the ball. That gets them into their play action game. I agree. Couldn't agree more. Texas cannot give up on running the ball. Now a split back look on third and three. Williams came in from the sideline. Number four is there with Johnson, and Sims is going to throw. He's going to throw to the short man for the first down. Brett Robin out of the backfield from that left halfback spot. And a first down in a very well-designed play by Greg Davis for 11 yards. And, and, and a good job that time on the offensive line. I think Oklahoma was really playing the run that time. Kind of did a rub off the back end of the flat. The wide receiver was kind of hooking up. Chris Sims took his time, made sure that there wasn't a corner out in the flat, and then took the easy throw for the first down. Wolfolk is going man to man with Roy Williams. Williams is out far to the left, and Wolfolk is taking it. Sims is looking out there. He's rolling. Pump fake underneath man. Got him close to midfield and well defended by Roy Williams on B.J. Johnson, who made the catch. So the final seconds take away on our first quarter. A little bit different than a year ago. Texas and Oklahoma are scoreless, and we'll be back with the second quarter of the SBC Red River Shootout after this. All around the world, Siemens is helping people work together, even when they're not together. From next generation internet to mobile business solutions, we're giving people the freedom to communicate better. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life. The first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Max Life conditioned use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. And for a simple way to keep your tires looking great, use Eagle One Wet Tire Shine. are back up, they're playing football again, and thousands of people are once again experiencing the simple joy of buying a new car. And GM is helping with interest-free financing on every car, truck, and SUV now through October 31st. Keep the dream alive. 
keep America rolling. The coaches, Bob Stoops and his brother Mike, very upset with Derek Strait that time. Gary Danielson speculating that he was supposed to blitz that time. He did not have responsibility on Williams, but they were able to hit the slot receiver for a few yards, Gary. Yeah, I think it was another one of those zone blitzes, and if you don't blitz, not much of a zone. Well, they're scoreless at the end of one, and a year ago, the Sooners had already scored twice in that route. Texas Here now. very happy. They survived the start. Now they can just play football. They turned it over once, and the Sooners could not capitalize as Williams switches to the left side of the field, and Williams is hit. Nothing much doing as Dusty Dvorak, number 94, is playing a big-time game defensively. He really is. Remember, he's another freshman, 94, right on the nose, right there. He's beating the center right across his face right there. The back. This time, it's the backside guard. Great feet. You see that? They go for his feet, jumps right over him. That's why they do those bag drills. Throw him at him, jump up, be active. Athletic defensive line. If you take away the sacks, Texas has rushed for about 20 yards, but sacks count, so it's only eight. Here is third down. Texas empties the backfield in the face of the blitz incomplete. Johnson, there was no time as Rocky Kalmus had just shortened the time frame for Chris Sims. Oklahoma is so messed up in their lineups this time. Oklahoma puts four people to the short side of the field. No one even covers B.J. Johnson that time. Chris Sims kind of throws it where he thinks B.J. is going to go. One guy stops, one guy goes, but... Mike Stoops and Brett Venables have to be totally upset with the alignment of their defense. They've lined up wrong five times in this game so far. Bradford gets it off. Fagan fair catch at the 20-yard line. Had to run up on it at the end. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan. Nissan introduces the totally new V6 Ultima, the cure for the common car. Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in Northern Beer. Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. And Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments, discover the power of Pacific Life. Brent, when I watch Oklahoma play offense, I, I begin to realize more and more just how valuable Josh Heupel was to this football team a year ago. When Quentin Griffin can't get the football, Oklahoma seems lost. Josh Heupel got big plays for him. Right now, where are their big plays? They're running a wide receiver wide and nothing doing. And you mentioned Quentin Griffin, and here's Mac Brown on number 22's importance to OU. If you let him have his yards, and he's going to get some, but if you let him have his yards, you lose the game. You've got to try to control their running game because they can throw the ball well. Indeed they can, but they have controlled Griffin here so far. He has carried the ball two times for no net yards, and a new quarterback comes in. Jason White has checked into the game for OU. On second down, they blitz him, and they sack him at the 10-yard line. Jermaine Anderson, the senior from Texas City. Anderson just comes from the, the left side here, just off the corner. I don't know if it's a busted assignment. That's their best offensive lineman. Yes, a busted assignment up front. Frank Romero should have turned out on him. He went inside. He had help inside from Wes Sims and just turned the defensive end loose. you got to wonder if Nate Hibble is still dinged from a week ago. Third down and 18. And here's Jason White, the sophomore from Tuttle, Oklahoma. High percentage pass to Norman underneath. Gets it back to the original line of scrimmage, and Quentin Jammer makes the stop. Very surprising Nate Hibble comes out of the game so quickly. And Brent, you and I talked about him in warm-ups a little bit. He seemed to be struggling throwing the ball in warm-ups. That beating he took a week ago, maybe something we didn't know is the reason that Jason White is in this football game so quickly. Now the Horns should get good field position. Nate 
Jonathan Basher is an outstanding return man. He'll face Ferguson. They did not have the punt block on that time. They wanted to return for field position, but folks, I'm going to tell you right now, the Horns are going to try to block a punt before this game is over. So 12 minutes to go, and the Texas defense has knocked one quarterback out of the game, and they've dominated Quentin Griffin. But the OU defense has been stout also, and we are scoreless. I'm out. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Amazing. And now the alley-oop reverse. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design. Oh, my. And what everyone's been waiting for, the two-handed thunder. For the perfect dip every time. Oh, the judges have to be impressed. New Tostito Scoops. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. By all appearances, I'm a server. But look deeper, and you'll see that I'm an entire company. A direct one-to-one -one relationship that adds value instead of cost. I'm just the part of the company you'll be looking at when you realize that I'm not just another pretty face. I'm a better way of doing things. Enterprise systems that are easy to build, easy to own, easy as Dell. Dell PowerEdge servers use Intel Pentium 3 Xeon processors. This could be for a national championship. It's up. Messed it to the right. Number one Miami faces Florida State next Saturday at noon Eastern on ABC. Well, Gary, our tape truck was able to find this replay, and I think this is when Hibble was injured. Yes, it was the long pass. Uh, just his last series, he was taken down, thrown to run. Now, watch him kind of favor his left arm shoulder as he gets up. Yep, right there. Gets picked up by one hand. He's back out on the field, but obviously not 100%. Now, Sims and the Longhorn. Offense go back to work. Plenty of time. Home run ball. Johnson incomplete, and a penalty is called. A penalty against Andre Wolfolk. Andre Wolfolk, man to man this time. Cuts off Johnson one way, turns and run with him. He's in front of him, turns around for the ball, has his left arm on him, and the ball is thrown short. And uh, let's quickly get an update from Jack on Hibble's con condition. Well, Brent, Nate Hibble continues to warm up over my shoulder, but he is showing a little bit of pain when he goes through the throwing motion. Granted, it was his left shoulder, but Mark Mangino walked up to him and just shouted to him, can you go? And all Nate Hibble did was shake his head up and down. Yes. He's a tough hombre. He proved that to us last week. He took a savage pounding at the hands of Kansas State. Uh, the Wildcats really beat on him last yes. week, and uh, he hung in and stayed in the game. But here today, the Horns have knocked him out early, and now Ivan Williams, the running back. First down for Texas inside the 35-yard line. Puts it in the hands of Tony Jeffrey. First down, Texas. I think it's going to be very difficult to play zone defense against Chris Sims. His ball velocity is so strong right now that you just don't have time to move as linebackers. You play off of him like this, 
boy, zip, that ball is in there. Those linebackers aren't moving two steps trying to cover it. Sims has pressure, but look at him step up and throw the ball this year compared to last season. Let's see if Texas can do what Florida State could not do. A touchdown in the red zone against the OUD. <laughs> Jeffrey on the end around gets nowhere off that first down, and that puts you in second and long off of that play. Yeah, speaking of quarterbacks, it's time for our Aflac trivia question. Who was the only Texas quarterback ever picked in the first round of an NFL draft? We'll give you one hit. He threw two no-hitters for the Longhorns baseball team. In fact, folks, he went to Austin on a baseball scholarship. Only Texas quarterback drafted in the first round. Second down and 10. 11 now after the loss. Play fake, sprint left, throw underneath, incomplete for the fullback that time, Matt Trissel, and he was in effect a safety valve as Sims was sprinting hard to the left. That brings up third and 11 here, Gary. But Sims has been good in the pocket with protection, playing zone against his Texas fine receivers and that quarterback, I think you're in trouble. I think you'll see Mike Stoops, Brent Venable, the two coordinators for Oklahoma, start to come after Sims. They can't handle him when he's throwing the ball. I think Venables is saying, go get him. Third down, 11. Texas empties the backfield. Not much protection if all you can get there. Here they come. Hit on the release. Incomplete. That's your only chance. That's your only chance against this guy. So it's a field goal time for the young kicker for the Longhorns. Number seven, Dusty Mangum on the field. The freshman from Mesquite, Texas. Duncan has missed one already for OU. And now Mangum will attempt to put him ahead. Trahan is the holder. Here's your 35-yard attempt. This for the lead. Blocked. Off to the side. Scooped up by Oklahoma. Out to the 39-yard line. A blocked punt by Andre Wolfolk, who has an interception and a blocked field goal. What a start for number 17. That kick was very low, though. That kick was no more than eight feet off the ground. Watch Wolfolk coming inside. The kick was. He's got some nice elevation there, doesn't he? I think it was going to go left anyway as he hooked it low. But that penetration in Wolfolk, who started out with a brilliant football game, I think Brent moving him to defense full time has really freed him up to be the athlete that everyone in Oklahoma knows he is. The next personnel mistake that Stoops and his staff makes will be their first personnel <laughs> mistake. And Hibble's in the game. Do they understand talent? First down with Hibble back in the gun. Johnson was almost there, and it is dropped at the 45. That ball was dropped by Antoine Savage, the big playmaker of a week ago against Kansas State. But, folks, number 11, he was bearing down on the quarterback. He was. Nate Hibble, and you saw him trying to throw on the sideline could barely lift his left arm. Now, don't underestimate how important that is to get your strength in the throw. That left side pulls that right arm through. We'll see. Texas doesn't try to come after him and get him more punishment. Second down and 10. Here it comes. Got him on the release. And he had to bounce it. And the horns are bringing heat. See, when he tries to throw backing up now, he just does not have the arm strength. He's going to have to step into every throw and use his legs to give him strength. And that's why I think Carl Reese will say, I'm coming at you. It's like having a boxer woozy. you got to keep going after him and not let him get off the mat. There's no question he is hurt. Only and, three and, and now nine. Oklahoma and Gino and Chuck Long, a former quarterback, have to make an important decision as to whether this guy's just being too courageous and they need to get another quarterback in the game. Trips to the left by the timeout. I don't, I don't think he can do it. Hibble. I don't think he can do it. There's some pain out there on the field, and Hibble calls a timeout. timeout we'll take a break.
This is for the people that I call my friends. We're just getting started when the long day ends. This bug's for yeah. you. and counting. The new 210 horsepower supercharged Nissan Xterra. Still everything you need, nothing you don't. Want to try that triple Lex? What the heck? I got supplemental insurance. What's that? Affleck! A Lex? No, that something something insurance. Affleck! Oh. Affleck! Even the best insurance doesn't give you cash for things like lost pay and other expenses. Uh, this does. What does? Aflac. Ask about it at work. Folks, when we were asked, pick a winner, just couldn't do it. I could make an argument for either one of these football teams this year, and that's how this one's unfolding. It has been a terrific football game so far, and you talk about hitting down there in the trenches. Third down and ten. Still completed it. Mark Clayton at the midfield stripe for a first down, and Hibble is rocked again. But he courageously throws, and now he's headed off to the sideline. That's one of the best throws I've ever seen. One of the best throws I've ever seen. A guy that's playing with one arm, watch this, coming right in at him, bearing down. He throws that ball, gets slammed to his left shoulder as he throws it. What a play. This guy was a golfer. What's going on here is Jason White is back in the football game. Marcus Tubbs knocked him out of the game. Now Jason White with the inside handoff and Griffin squirts to the 46-yard line. So here's our Pacific Life game summary. Let's feature number 17 has started both ways, but today just at the corner. First, he intercepted Chris Sims. Then he elevated to block the field goal attempt by Mangum. This is a guy headed for a big career in the NFL. A six-foot, two-inch corner. You put him on Randy Moss all night long, and you say he belongs to you, big fella. Second down and six. Yes, White, and he got it again. And Mark Clayton reaches for another first down. Now it's Jason White being rocked that time. Well, Jason White was in a battle with Nate Hibble before this year for the starting job. It wasn't but a couple weeks before the season started that Hibble was named the starter. So White believes in himself, obviously, made a tremendous read on that one, hitting Clayton. And Clayton's emergence, I think, number nine, the freshman, has allowed Wolfolk to move the defense full time. He's out left with Mackey. Inside the Horns 40. White moving the team. Nothing doing. Coming in was Philip Geiger. And Geiger makes the stop. If it looks like Texas has a bunch of little corners on the field, as Geiger right there is going to move around and then slash in there just as the snap goes. He's on block. That's part of that scheme, that 3 4 scheme that Texas is using. If it looks like Texas has about six corners in the game, they got six corners in the game. That's what they all were. They've been moved some to safety, but everyone back there is an athlete who was a former cornerback when he started his career at Texas. Only Brooks is back in center field as a lone safety for the Horns. On second down, in a foot race, throws complete again. And there is Mark Clayton, the redshirt freshman from Arlington, Texas, a homecoming, doing the job. That's 10 more yards. And D.D. Lewis was closing in on the quarterback that time. All right. Who was the only Texas quarterback ever picked in the first round now of an NFL draft? Remember, he threw those two no-hitters. 
Folks, you remember him. He's one of the all-time greats, a Hall of Famer. One of our heroes, Bobby Lane, 1947, third pick by the Chicago Bears. And, of course, his greatest days were as Gary Danielson's hero up in <laughs> Detroit. Number 22. And over to Pittsburgh. Third down and three. Short of the first down because of a great tackle by Nathan Basher on Mark Clayton. I'll tell you, Jason White is playing brilliantly. He's falling out of the pocket. He's showing great athletic skill. I think this might be one that Oklahoma goes for right here. It would be about a 48-yard field goal. It'll be fourth and about a long two or three yards, and it looks like they are. How about Jason White stepping up at this time and doing what he has done? He's been brilliant. He looks good, doesn't he, yes, Gary? he absolutely does. They need two, the Sooners do. They're going to reach the 28. The timeout is called. Good time to take one. Can't afford a mistake right here. White and the Stoop staff will talk it over. Timeout. How can you provide for the future of the people who depend on you? With Pacific Life and its expertise in investments, annuities, and insurance, discover the power of Pacific Life. There's a place where I get my favorite Italian sauces with all kinds of pastas, plus all the salad and breadsticks I want. Sounds like Mom's house, but it's Olive Garden and their never-ending pasta bowl for $7.95. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Access denied, but I need those grass for the meeting. You just go to Plan B. Plan B. What's Plan B? I don't know what Plan B is. Tell me, what is Plan B? As you can see from Mr. Stinsmulen and Mr. Nemily, uh, the last couple of years were well below estimates. But this year, we expect to grow enormously. <laughs> Any questions? Reliable remote access, so you won't need a Plan B. SBC. We're on it. Introducing the tough new crew cab long bed. It's the next frontier. The University of Oklahoma is on the move. Among public universities, OU ranks at the top in National Merit Scholars enrolled per capita, and the top five in Rhodes Scholars graduated, and has almost tripled the number of endowed professorships in just six years. OU is home to a new natural history museum, the largest of its kind in the world at a university. And OU's art museum just received the single most important gift of art to a public university in U.S. history. Keep your eye on the University of Oklahoma, setting the pace for excellence. Last Tuesday, all of America had the same reaction to Bob Patterson. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. Or something like that. Bob Patterson, Tuesday at 9, 8 Central on ABC. Now it's time for the Nissan Drive summary. OU behind their backup quarterback, Jason White. 31 yards and eight plays and almost four minutes is your fourth and two. Uh, Brent, also, Hippel was in part of this drive, but Oklahoma likes to run the option in this situation. At least they did it with Josh Heifel. Let's see if they do it. There's the look and the pitch. And Griffin goes for it. Inside the 15. Robin Brooks there to get him out of bounds. And there is that same look that Snoop Jones with Heifel. And it's good for 17 yards. Nice little change up here. Bring the guy in motion. Someone chases him. And then come down on the outnumbered right here and run an easy option. A five-flat quarterback could run this one, pitch it out, and that's the first time Quinton Griffin has gotten any space in the last two games I've watched. Now White lines up back in the shotgun on a first down from the 13. Takes the inside handoff right for the end zone. Just short of it. Well, there's the added dimension that a running quarterback can bring to this offense. I told, at least I thought all week, Brent, that Oklahoma would have a wrinkle for this game. Here is the wrinkle for this game. Much like 
Clemson does with Woody Danzler. Northwestern does with Zach Kustak. Oklahoma now has added this quarterback keeper in their offense. That'll get some type of a running game in this set. Here's first and goal. Hudson look again to Griffin. Jason White off the Sooner bench. Three option looks. Twice the number 22. This one for the touchdown as the injured Nate Hibble watches from the sideline as his Sooners strike first. at a 7-0 Oklahoma lead. A changeup has been, and Oklahoma has found another weapon. Nate Hippel made a courageous throw to get the first down, but he got hurt again. Now, and you have to admire, Brent, a guy who stays ready. That's the sign of great coaching. When a backup player comes in, no drop-off in talent, and they keep moving. OU Legion, I'm out. There is a start, there is a finish, and in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of a student athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. It'll be Chris Sims' turn. Knows it's Hill, short of the 20-yard line, and OU rocking right now. So Chris Sims, 8 of 13 for 83 yards, but one interception comes out. Williams, his big running back, has been held to 19 yards on seven carries. Williams, his big receiver, has caught four passes for 54 yards. And they will sprint out trailing by seven points in the first half. Yes, but no running game for Texas. Ivan Williams, seven carries for 19 yards. Sims a short block, and he'll throw underneath, working the tight end Brock Edwards, the sophomore from Fort Worth. And coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, John Saunders and Terry Bowden will bring you all the scores and highlights from around the country. Johnson's off to his right. Sims left. Time. Both skate the tight end for a first down to the 34-yard line. You said it first, time. Sims had time to throw. When he has time to throw, you can see the improvement in his game. He's able to scan the field. He just doesn't zero in on one wide receiver anymore. He looks down, look, he looked a little right, came back left, tried to go deep, stayed with his feet right under him, a little bounce, and dumped it off to the tight end. Now they walk the strong safety out to the slot. First and 10, and they blitz on a cross. Sims is sacked. Confusion on the blocking, and Jimmy Wilkerson gets there. Jimmy Wilkerson's basically been unblockable coming off the edge in this game. His average right there is what caused a few problems, at least for Sims. 
Strong safety's way out outside of your screen right there. And then that little stunt upside. Lehman comes. Here comes Kelmus around number 20. That forces Chris Sims into the pocket for an easy sack. That's the third sack of the game against Texas. And OU has thrown him for 18 yards and losses. It's been with the blitz that's really kept the Texas offense backed up in these long yardage situations. Now they show a late blitz. But Sims has time, and he throws it to Jeffrey. Short of the first down. This is complete to Tony Jeffrey. Number 12, Tony Jeffrey, once a high school quarterback. Redshirt freshman out of the Houston area. That seems to be a pretty good formula for finding playmakers nowadays. Uh, Oklahoma has a bunch of them on their team, both in the secondary and at wide receiver. It seems like more and more schools are finding those guys that can do a lot of multi-talented things. Big third down for Sims and Texas. They're three of seven on third down. Need five. Time. First down in the middle. Scape puts it down. Oh, you jumps on it. He's down. They're going to rule he's down. No fumble. No fumble. First down, Texas. Bo Scape. What a route by Bo Scape, the tight end. A little shake route was going to fake an out route got into the middle of that zone and I'm telling you Oklahoma you can't stop this guy watch the tight end right there shakes out and then comes right to the middle number 80 Chris Sims sees it reads it there's the opening right there throw it to the opening bang there it is look at that you can't have anything better than that throw the ball to the middle of the field the tight end again and the ground caused the fumble first down and 10 they come back with the running game, and it is Victor Ike trying to squeeze what he can out of it. A closer look now at that fumble escape went down. Hit and ball and ground come at approximately the same time. I think that's a good call. Second down and four coming up here. So they go to the more experienced Victor Ike rather than the sensational all-everything freshman Cedric Benson. This is not a game for inexperienced players. Experience matters in the way they're hitting. Second down and three. Ike cuts back. First down. Just short of the 20-yard line. That play was designed to go right, but Roy Williams, number 38, just blew up the play, and then the backside of the Oklahoma defense got it fold, got fell, folded down that time, and that was a real nice read by Victor Wright. So Victor Wright giving the running game a little bit of a lift. He's the junior from Austin. Sims comes up under center on a first down, just shy of the red zone by a yard. Defensive front, no flag as he throws it outside. Completes. Mike and Jones there got was that Wolf Oak yeah, all Wolf over Oak Mike Jones. Back up tight end. I wonder if both Scape got uh, rocked a little bit because they got two tight ends in the game, Edwards and Jones, and Scape is not in the game. percent to 80 percent zone in this game williams has caught four balls he'd be the big go-to guy not this time here they come a little too fast in the middle you can see that defensive tackle a little bit eager down in there as he jumped across Head ball. Head ball. Contact, contact by defense, by defense. Oh. well this is a must must win Surely, the United States can beat Jamaica. Surely. Wow. Is that a blowout? Is a blowout in soccer like 2-0? 2-0. Yeah, that's it. That's right? it. That's a two blowout. Nil. That's a blowout. <laughs> you might want to tune in and see if you get some field goal kickers up there. Second down and four. Now it's run pass. Texas can do anything at second and four. They're going to throw it, and he wins. Can't get the handle. 
dropped it at the 19 yard line was trying to turn down and run before he grabbed the football that time and it'll be third down and nobody knows it better than Roy. You know that that's a, a little bit of a tough catch. It, it should be made obviously but when that defensive lineman gets his hands up it's almost like a batter swinging at the ball. You lose it for just a second. You really have to concentrate it right in your hands. And the way Sims can play the ball you can't take your eye off it and get ready to run. Matt McCoy checks in as the nickelback for OU. Third down. Time. This one's complete to Ike. Well, Teddy Lehman on him at the 12 yard line, and he's short of a first down. And this is a decision for Mac Brown. Does he put Texas on the board here? with a field goal attempt with time running down or does he gamble that he can pick up the first down well, it's real close isn't it I thought he was right at the line are they going to measure yes they are yeah that's why he called the officials timeout Ike fell forward right at the end of that I thought he was stopped short at least a yard short also he got it yep. as he reached forward so there again the experience of Victor Ike. No decision for Mac. The but next play is the decision play right here. 56 seconds to go, 55 seconds to go here in the half. But Texas, doing a good job, still has their timeout. They've got all their timeouts yep. left. That's an eternity. Three timeouts and 40 seconds to go. draw play and I was tripped up by Rocky Kalmus at the 14 yard line and he stumbled into the hole and there's the first time out used this half by the Longhorns Rocky Kalmus playing a lot of zone drops or blitzing really nothing in between well Jack we've had a lot of great games in this series haven't we well Brent let's take you back to 1976 a couple of days before that game Daryl Royal accused the Oklahoma coaching staff of spying on the Texas workouts. But when it was all said and done, the Red River shootout ended up in a 6-6 tie. But evermore, they called it the Spy Bowl. Now, Barry and the crew, they wouldn't spy on anybody. Was he spying on the offense or the defense? How can anybody accuse that group of spying? Well, OU. Leading 7-0 behind their backup quarterback, Jason White. That's the headline of this game. He gave him that option look. And Quentin Griffin scored this shootout's only touchdown so far. I'd look for Bo Scaife right now, the tight end in this situation. Sims likes to go to his tight end. This is a perfect time down in the middle of it, uh, down in the scoring zone, where Texas is so good. Go Mike Stoops. Fox back off the field. Done a fabulous Second job. I'm sure he reminded them that number 80, Scaife, is a huge target for Sims. 29 seconds remaining. <laughs> Running back is out into the pattern. Sims has to throw it away. Lehman doing a great job on the fullback that time. Trissel was the safety valve, and Lehman would not frame. Well, Teddy Lehman, one of the fastest players on the football field, matched up with Kalmus at linebacker. They don't even ever have to substitute for those two guys. Scaife went down in the end zone, but Oklahoma was ready for him that time. Now the nickel. McCoy back in the game. Sloan Turn Thomas out far to the right. Roy Williams matched against straight. Size advantage Williams. Here's your third down play for the Hounds. He looking Williams. Throws it incomplete. Fourth down with Derek Straight in that matchup. Straight did a take, did a nice job that time reading Chris Sims' eyes because there was a blitz to the opposite side of the field. Chris had nothing to do but go to. Roy Williams on this, couldn't get the fade. You see straight looking at the quarterback, reads the throw and cuts across, and actually the ball was thrown the only place it could have been thrown. Good defensive call that time from Oklahoma and Stoops. Mangum had one field goal already 
block today. This one from 27 to put the horns on the board at the end of the half. And he does. Mango hits the field goal, and the horns hit the scoreboard with 14 seconds left. And OU will be looking for a big time return if they can get it. Well, let's go down to our buddy, Jack Aroot. You don't know Jack. Well, Brent, you know part of ABCSports.com. You can log in as a fan and ask me a question. I'll try to get the answer. That's what happened with Shannon from Austin, Texas. He wanted to know, can you tell me a little bit about the history of the corny dogs at the Texas State Fair? Well, I can tell you, Neil Fletcher invented the corny dogs almost 53 years ago. They've been a staple here at the Texas State Fair ever since then. They're hot dogs dipped in cornbread batter. And I'll tell you what, over three quarters of a million of them are produced and consumed at every Texas State Fair. Oh, baby. Set this up about a half dozen, but include the mustard. You can't have a corny dog without the mustard. I didn't want to get it on my plate. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, my friend. Jack was happy to do that one. He didn't have to eat a and bug this week. Bevo says, I'd rather see him eat them corny dogs than those hamburgers, <laughs> huh? That's what I want. I want you. That's good. Feast on them corny dogs. On the ground. And this is Savage looking for the big home run. Slips free. 30-yard line. Cuts back and Savage outside the 35-yard line that time. And four ticks of the clock left here for Jason White, the backup quarterback, in case you just joined us. Nate Hibble, number eight, injured shoulder, tried to come back and play, started their touchdown drive, then had to give way because of pain. And his backup, the sophomore from Tuttle, Oklahoma. Now remember these two fellas, race was a little bit wide open in the spring, we were told. And then uh, Hibble, the transfer from Georgia, took it over. And now today you can see that Jason, he's been real good, folks, real good. Perfect in his passing. They're going to take that lead on into the locker room. Well, it was a first half worthy of this rivalry as Stoops and OU on a 17-game winning streak. Lead it at the half. This is the SBC Red River Shootout, where our score is OU 7, Texas 3. Time out. Horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Introducing Chili's Baby Back Ribs. To go. Get in, get out, get on with your life. Sensation as real as the streets. Mountain Dew Code Red. I'll get this. Oh, a platinum card. There's always a catch. Low rates that explode. Hidden fees. It's a highway robbery. Actually, I have a Capital One Platinum card. Get a new Capital One Platinum card with a 9.9% fixed rate that starts low and stays low, plus no balance transfer fees. <laughs> What's in your wallet?
The Valvoline Halftime Show, brought to you by Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Welcome back. John Saunders alongside Terry Bowden. A lot of emotion in that game, and last year it was a blowout, 47 to nothing at one point in the game before the final 63 to 14. This year, things a little bit different. Texas had revamped their defense and had it going early. This is Nate, no, rather, this is Sims tossing out of pocket. It is picked off. And Oklahoma returns the ball deep into Texas territory. From there, Hibble. Getting hit. Remember last week against Kansas State, he got knocked around, got knocked around again, and reaching for the shoulder. Well, both teams played real conservatively on offense, John. Defenses have been the show the first half. All right, you can see Quentin Griffin. Six touchdowns against them last year. They'll have to settle for one in the first half right now. Though Oklahoma with a 7-3 lead. Texas, their offense really, I mean, they got it deep late in the game and got the field goal, but their offense hasn't showed a lot. Chris Sims has been throwing a lot to the flats, not a lot deep. You know, he's got a big play. He's got a big play. He's got a big Chris Sims. He's the key to this game, making a deep throw, hitting it, showing big in this game. All right. Florida facing LSU, a team that passes the ball very well <laughs> against a team that can't defense against the pass very well. And Rex Grossman, if he hasn't moved to the top of your Heisman Trophy list, he should be at least in the top three. Already almost 200 yards and three touchdowns. This is the best offense in America. 50 points a game. They have. If they win this, if strength of schedule means anything, they ought to be number one next week. All right, 21 and 9. Of course, there's Miami in their game today. They face Troy State. Lou Holtz, the turnaround man, facing Kentucky. And Phil Petty is quarterback. Sometimes Blue likes him, sometimes he doesn't, but he must have liked him today. 14 yards on this touchdown run. South Carolina had a 14-0 lead, and Petty did it on the ground, did it through the air as well. 23 yards to Corey Alexander. South Carolina with a 21-0 lead. They went 42-6 in the final. Petty, 10 of 16 for just 112 yards, but two touchdowns and he rushed. Well, South Carolina, well. isn't that great at anything, but they know how to win. They're great at knowing how to win football games. Washington facing USC, and USC's lost three games, but they've all been close ones. Right now with a 14-7 lead. Cody Pickett's been knocked out of the game. Carson Palmer has been terrific. Washington Cup comes back in fourth quarters and knows how to win. Seven of their last 11 wins have been fourth quarter victories. Michigan facing Penn State. Joe Paterno. When will he get the one victory he needs to catch Bear Bryant? Zach Mills hit by Larry Foote. That causes a fumble. Sean Lazarus picks it up and starts rumbling, bumbling, stumbling before he's finally pulled down. But it was that way on both sides of the ball. John Navarre, he gets sacked by Finney. Penn State missed a field goal. Michigan got a couple field goals from Hayden Epstein. And right now, they're just about ready to go to halftime. Michigan with a 6-0 lead. Well, Michigan now is probably the best team in the Big Ten in my mind, so it's a good game for Penn State. But this team frustrates Joe Paul. They just find ways to mess up and not take advantage of opportunities. Last week, I remember you saying you didn't see an easy win on the schedule for Penn State. That's right. And Indiana at 0-3, we thought perhaps that would be the game that they would get if they didn't get any of the other ones. But right now, folks, Indiana has a 63 32 lead in the fourth quarter over Wisconsin, so there's nothing easy there. No, you can't circle any dug as Indiana putting Randall on L back at quarterback. Penn State, it's going to be tough, but they are in a game at just 6-0 right now with Michigan. Georgia Tech at Duke. George Godsey looking for Kerry Watkins. Watkins had a terrific day, four receptions, 60 yards, and a couple of touchdowns for Duke, their 17th straight loss. Yeah, Georgia Tech looked very poorly on defense last year, and they need to play well. Last week, they played poorly against Clemson on defense. Good day today for, for Georgia Tech's defense. Yeah, Godsey, though, lightening it up. You see 24 of 40 as well. Baylor against number 22, Texas A&M. A&M with a win last week against Notre Dame. That's the best they've actually looked. 16 to 10 now the lead five yard touchdown run by Keith Joseph. Well at Texas A&M the defense is starting to look like the wrecking crew again. Pittsburgh and Notre Dame we talked about the Irish losing to Texas A&M well right now they've got a 17 to 7 lead. Jones with a five yard touchdown run at Carlisle Holiday from the quarterback position 67 yards on the ground. Well both of these teams have had bad starts but Notre Dame is finding an offense running some options finding ways to be productive on offense. Let's update the Michigan game right now. John Navarre Drops back to pass. Looking for Marquise Walker. Catches him in the end zone. 
for the touchdown. This just before halftime. 12 seconds remaining. 16 yards on the touchdown toss. So things continue to get bad for Penn State. That's if you right. anything to say, hey, we had a pretty good first half. But well, that's right. Half. You never let a team go down and score right before the half. They're finding ways just to mess up and lose ball games. 13 and nothing. We, of course, will keep you up to date on that one as well. Right now, we've got a close one in the Red River Shootout. 7-3, Texas trailing Oklahoma. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life. The first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines, Max Life conditions use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. cable network of cordless power tools. Pass the power on. Conference, pursuing victory with honor. We haven't cured cancer. We don't know how to close the hole in the ozone layer. We can't control the weather or the crops or hunger. We can't keep the sun from burning out one day. And we can't stop war. Yet. Texas. Welcome to Times Square and Times Square Stadium here with the Valvoline Halftime Show. John Saunders alongside Terry Bowden. And Terry, how would you like to have your first year in Division 1A, as with Troy State, and you schedule at Nebraska, at Miami? They actually had a lead at Nebraska of 7-0 before losing that one big. And today, you get the feeling that Ken Dorsey knew he'd be in for a quiet day. A little more difficult in the first half than expected. 22 yards to Kevin Beard here. Miami grabs a 17-7 lead. Takes that to the locker room. Men defense. Brock Nutter picked off by Edward Reed. 25 yards for the touchdown. And Miami in a tune-up for Florida State. Next week here on ABC wins 38-7. The final Dorsey with almost 300 yards. So far, Miami has beaten two bad teams for Pennsylvania. Rutgers and a state that's not a state. Troy State crossed the 1-3 <laughs> in their first season with the big boys. Virginia Tech facing West Virginia. Frank Beamer's team has been terrific on both sides of the ball. Grant Noel handing off to Kevin Jones. Lee Suggs not there, but they pick it up with a group of running backs. 44 yards for this touchdown. Burnell had 102 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Noel threw for 171 yards. And Jones, the youngster, 67 yards and a touchdown. West Virginia was supposed to give them a test. This is their worst home loss since 1963. But vintage Beamer ball, great defense, great Great specialty teams, and oh, do they run that football. The third shutout, giving up just about five points a game, that will generally get you victory. Georgia facing Tennessee, great finish in this game, but Damian Gary returns this punt here in the second quarter, takes off 72 yards, great move right there, and then breaks out of a tackle. And Georgia trying to win in Knoxville for the first time in 21 years. Casey Clawson, 62 yards to Travis Stevens. This is in the final minute of the game. Tennessee was trailing. They take it in for the touchdown and grab a 24-20 lead. Under a minute to go. And David Green, a youngster quarterback, leads him right back. Six yards to Veron Haynes. Two-point conversion was no good. But Mark Rick has the victory. 1980, the last time Georgia won in Knoxville. John, you know how many times I've seen Mark Rick call that exact same pass play for a touchdown as the coordinator at Florida State. And usually have the same result as well. 303 yards for David Green. Colorado facing K-State. K-State with 37 points last week against Oklahoma. Nothing doing today. Craig Oaks, 23 yards to Daniel Graham. Colorado had the lead, and L. Roberson, the quarterback, 
was sacked six times in the game. Picked off here by Marcus Harrison, and Colorado goes to 4-1. and one. Well, Kansas State, after the loss to Oklahoma, was just flat. But Colorado, my sleeper before the season, they needed a game like this to get some national recognition. Definitely getting the attention of people right now in K-State. 94, the last time they won back-to-back, -back, rather lost, back-to-back -back regular season games. That's Joe Tiller thinking about last week when he probably shouldn't have escaped with a victory here. Brandon Hans, four yards on the touchdown run. And Joe Tiller and Purdue go to 4-0, 23-14 the final. But well, they're not a real strong team. They're going to have to win a lot of close games this year to have a chance in the Big Big Ten. But Joe Tiller, 24-3 at home. Virginia and Maryland. Maryland looking to go to 5-0 for Ralph Friedrich. Returning to his alma mater, Sean Hill, 53 yards to Julian Gary. And if you didn't believe in Maryland before, out of that number 25 spot, you should today as they hold off Virginia and win this one 41 to 21. First time they started 5-0 since 78. Ralph Frazier, what he did at Georgia Tech as the coordinator, he sat back, found out what offenses to put in, what defenses were good in the ACC. He knew that ACC best job of any coach in the country right now. And no coach, first-year coach for Maryland, has ever started 5-0. And take a look at the standings and no, don't stand on your head and look <laughs> down and say, what's Clemson doing on the bottom of the Maryland on the top of Florida State under them? This Maryland Terrapins team, Ralph Friedgen as the offensive coordinator of Georgia Tech, has put a lot of that in with Maryland as well. He sure has. That's the Virginia team that beat Clemson and the North Carolina team they beat, beat Florida State. Maryland <laughs> Terrapins on top, although there's plenty more to still stretch out the rest of this season. We'll continue with the Valvoline Halftime Show in just a moment. Both will protect your engine from rust and extreme temperatures, but only Xerox guarantees performance for five years or 100,000 miles. And it costs less, which kind of takes the other guy out of the picture, doesn't it? <laughs> you can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, babe. What are you talking about? No dip. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip in chip. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostito Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. Some guys take their car's performance a little more seriously than others. That's why they turn to Valvoline SynPower. Synthetic oils, additives, and cleaners. When you wish upon a star Makes no difference who you are Anything your heart desires will come to you Barry Bond, you have just broken the home run record. What are you going to do next? We're going to Disney World! The Valvoline Halftime Show, brought to you by Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. ABC Sports is proud to present the skating event of the year, Four decades of America's champions come together to pay tribute to the 1961 U.S. World Figure Skating Team. Hi, I'm Peggy Fleming. Please join us for this ABC Sports special event next Sunday at 2 Eastern, 3 Pacific. Next Saturday here on ABC, number one Miami facing Florida State at noon. Then regional action at 3.30. Some will see Wisconsin and Ohio State. Others will be in the Pac-10 to watch Washington take on UCLA. Then on the West Coast only at 4 o'clock Pacific, it'll be San Diego State facing UNLV. That's all next Saturday. Meanwhile, today, Minnesota facing Illinois. Kurt Kittner's having a pretty good year. 28 yards to Brandon Lloyd as Illinois grabs a 10 to nothing lead. Kittner's not done. This time, he hooks up with Lloyd again. This one for much more yards, 59 yards. There's the touch, Terry, we've talked about with this guy. Well, after Illinois' last week's poor showing against Michigan, people thought they might win that one. They needed a big win here to get back to what people think they could compete for the Big Ten Championship. Illinois with the victory there. And Western Carolina loses to Georgia Southern. Adrian Peterson, 105 yards on the ground. That's the 36th straight game he's done that. That's an NCAA record if you include the playoffs. 48 games, he has been over 100 yards. Like three Heisman trophies on that list as well. 
Adrian Peterson, the best running back in the country, any division. You heard it here. All right, 36 in a row. Congratulations to him. That's it for a Valvoline Halftime Show. Right now, let's take it back out to your game. And here in Dallas, the Texas show band of the Southwest performing. And ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message. And a word from our ABC stations. I'd been waiting for a day like this. A day when an all-in-one wireless plan would make things simple for people. The Sprint PCS Total Digital Connections plan is here. It brings all the best features together. Clear calls, nationwide long distance, voice command, and wireless web. Thanks, boy. And now, it's my job to tell the world. Total Digital Connections Plan, only from Sprint PCS. Seven Central. My wife and kids on Wednesday night. Here's the time. Oh, really? If you tune in late, then that's still fine. Jim Belushi's up with According to Jim. ABC Wednesday night. See you then. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just get a great $6 restaurant burger without the restaurant? Introducing the $6 burger, only $3.95 at Carl's Jr. I grew up on this farm, following Daddy around, being his constant shadow. When he bought this land, it had a lot of concrete, sludge, and saltwater pits all over it. He wanted it cleaned up, but he died with it still a mess. One night during the news, I heard this lady talking about an oil field that had been cleaned up on her daddy's land. Her grandkids were playing in the same field, and she said, I wish my daddy were here to see it, and it brought tears to my eyes. Next day, I called OERB. I couldn't believe that someone was as interested in cleaning up my daddy's land as I was. Free of charge. When I look at the land, I feel gratitude to the oil and gas industry. If Daddy could see this land now, he'd say, Sister, job well done. I'm proud of you. ChannelOklahoma.com, your link to everything Oklahoma. Well, the Red River shootout in Dallas is a dandy. And, uh, Gary, you know, we break the game down. The one edge we did give Texas was backup quarterback. I take it all back. <laughs> it's the backup quarterback on the other side. Uh, you know, there was a great battle for this job. Nate Hibble won it, but Jason White yeah. stayed ready. And that's what you have to do. And, 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 you know, the way both quarterbacks have been hit with the blitzes, you, you know, and in the Big 12 this year, you got to have two. This is a tough football game. Yes. And, of course, Colorado. They moved into contention in the Big 12 with that big win against Kansas State today. Well, I think that's why these two teams know they have to play great football week in and week out. They, you know, Oklahoma just played Kansas State last week. Texas has a big game today. They blew away Texas Tech. So they come into this game, and you can see these two defenses are dominating the football game. They're just great players on defense. Yeah, let's take a look at uh, some of the numbers from the first half of this football game. You can see virtually no running game, but... The Sooners ran well enough, and uh, look at the first down situation. Yeah, 10, 10 to 5, and that, that's what allowed that time of possession to go in Texas's favor. But it's been the blitz package. If you give Chris Sims time to throw the ball, he's going to throw it. He's going to throw it accurately, and he's going to burn you. Oklahoma's given him a nice balance. A little zone, a little blitz, a little zone blitz. 
and it's kept him just enough off balance so they've only given up a field goal in this game. Well, there is number 18, Jason White. He's a sophomore from Tuttle, Oklahoma, and he'll be coming out here with the first series of the second half, and we'll see what adjustments the Texas defense made with the option now a possibility. They have to be very mindful on the outside. It is a short kickoff. Bounces and down at the 20 as it was not seen there up in the air. And David Pino was the kickoff man. And uh, let's check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, as you suspected, the hot hand of Jason White has led Mark Mangino, the offensive coordinator for the center, to stay with him. Mangino talked to me a little bit about the inexperience of their freshman center, though. Said, I made some mistakes with Vince Foster. I'm going to change it this time out. When we come back after this play, I'll tell you what Matt Brown told his Texas Longhorn team. Well, now. Safeties in the corners have got to be mindful of that inside handoff and sprint to the outside here. Jays are going to put it up on first down. Moving to the right outside the hash on the run. High. Well defended and complete for a first down. And he put it in Curtis Fagan's hands. Jason White's throwing off the run so well in this game. All right, Jack, what did Max say? Mac Brown was very, very happy in the locker room. He pointed to two years ago when they were down by a couple of touchdowns at the half. He pointed to last year when they were almost out of it at halftime, and he told his team, fellas, we are a second-half team. We're right where we want to be. Now, go get them. Yeah, well, they got to stop White. He's throwing for 42 yards. He's perfect. He's 5 of 5. and throwing on the run. And busted play coming from behind Johnson. Wrapped it up, but Corey Redding was also there. And when Redding and Johnson close in, it's adios if you got no protection. Jason White turned the wrong way. Everybody goes to their left. Jason White tries to pitch it to his right. Watch this. Oh, oh, I'm in trouble. And he's lucky he didn't get hurt on this one because you're going to take a big pop and the big guy, number 11, Johnson, just fell on top of him. Now it's second and 15. They put trips out to the left. Ronaldo works as the running back. They throw the flanker screen and they put it in Savage's hands. Now it's time, Gary, for our Morgan Stanley well connected storyline. Yeah, Wolf did a nice job, didn't he, on defense? Absolutely. Tackles, interceptions, blocked the field goal, and Chris Sims. He says ad advertised. I mean, he, he just throws the ball on the money every time. He's got brilliant tools, and he distributed to a lot of different players. Third and 13 for the Sooners. Redding can't get there. High incomplete. Oklahoma forced a punt. You talk about coverage on the field. Derrick Johnson, number 11, was also back there on pass coverage, working on the sideline along with Babers. What a drop number 11 has from his linebacking spot. There's Babers right there, man to man to the outside against the freshman Clayton. Now, the reason he could play so close is he had a safety behind him, covering up the deep ball so he can gamble on everything short. Well, White finally throws it in complete, and Ferguson drills one. Basher at the 20. Can't slip the second man, and it's one of the big fellas who comes in. Roy Williams, number 38, their All-American safety, makes the stop. I'm out. Great car 
at a great rate. Call or click Thrifty. How can you provide for the future of the people who depend on you? With the power of Pacific Life. For over 130 years, Pacific Life has improved the lives of millions with investments, annuities, and insurance. Because careful planning today can help them reach their dreams tomorrow. Discover the power of Pacific Life. No one spoils me like Mom does, but Olive Garden comes close with their never-ending pasta bowl. They make all these fresh, delicious homemade sauces, and then you pick which ones you want with which pastas for $7.95. You get all you want, too, just like at Mom's house. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Now there's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm, more evolved skin care. For a great car at a great rate, call or click Thrifty. It's a swingin' top 20 when golf's winningest women battle it out. Samsung World Championship, tomorrow with 4 Eastern on ABC. We are back. And the Longhorns again with poor starting field position inside their own 20-yard line against this OU defense. the first time they made the most out of it for about three yards and now it's time for the Dodge drive summary Gary this is exactly what Oklahoma did to Florida State in last year's BCS championship one time out of the four out of the five drives in the first half and look where they're starting in the second half did they start when any territory those 75 yard drives again this Oklahoma defense are tough to come on. 159 yards for Texas 95 for Oklahoma total, but Oklahoma had enough in its scoring drive to lead it 7-3. Play fake Sims, throws over Wilkerson, complete escape, short of the first down. Kalmus coming over defensively. <laughs> Kalmus and Everett, those guys just are so fast to the ball. Everett sometimes will make mistakes. Texas has not been able to get behind the safeties in this game, which, was, which everyone on Texas talked about. They had to take advantage of the aggressiveness for Oklahoma safeties. Victor Ike has been their best running back. I'm a little surprised they empty it out on third and two. They elect to put Sims naked in the backfield. They're going to throw for it. The Sooners will try to get there. Quick drop. Got it wide open. Johnson. To the 41 yard line and there was a lot of daylight between the defender that time and Johnson can't believe that that was the way this defense was designed they blitz right over the slot right here and don't leave anybody on the receiver look at this third and two come on Oklahoma you can't give a quarterback like that that's that's high schoolish anybody could throw that one gave him 14 more yards Sims is thrown for 155 he's 16 to 24 no touchdowns one interception Protection. Middle. Incomplete. Misfired as he tried to hook up with B.J. Johnson again. Let's check in with Jack. Well, Brent, believe it or not, Chris Sims likes to keep lists. One of the lists that he keeps are people that have become his detractors or things that he has failed at. Now, it seems that Mike Stoops early this year would question how Chris Sims could be on the Heisman Trophy list in the preseason. So he put Stoops on the list. Then Mike Stoops said he's a 10 times better player than last year. Sims said, wow, that's great. But he isn't coming off my list. <laughs> Second down and 10 with the running back behind him. They'll try Williams again, and he bangs it out to the 44-yard line. So Sims facing a passing situation again. Ivan Williams is going to come out. You know, Brent, you mentioned Tommy Harris as being, you know, the guy that they must handle. 
But this Oklahoma front four, all of them, do a great job. Corey Klein, Warcheck, Wilkerson, Heineke, they all do a good job. They do not get knocked down. Nobody is with Sloan Thomas. Here they come now. They've got him picked up far left. And a timeout. Oklahoma was fouled up on defense. And Mike Stoops is going to be livid. They up. had number nine, Sloan Thomas, uncovered. And finally, Perkins went dashing over to the other side, and OU is forced to use a very valuable timeout. Not having no defensive coordinators. Timeout. There was a time when professional basketball was dominated by tall, lumbering centers. But since the mid-'80s, it's been dominated by agile point guards. So what changed the modern game of basketball? Two words, Magic Johnson. Hey, nothing beats an original. Original Coors, brewed with Rocky Mountain water. Original Coors, it's showtime. <laughs> See what Sims can come up with. Checks it off. He's got one on one to his right. Sims checking, got great time. Oh, almost intercepted. He threw a bad ball that time, and Antonio Perkins couldn't get the handle. Another zone. Corners in the short flat. Safety's deep. Chris misreads this. He thinks it's man to man coverage. Look at that. Bait him, he baits him, he baits him, and Perkins cuts inside. If he could catch the ball, that would have been seven points. Sims goes from one side to the other side, comes late to where he thinks he's got a drop off. Very, very fortunate to get away with that one. Bradford standing on the horn 30. Here's Great tackle at the 20 yard line. Michael Unger makes a great tackle. There he is, number 29. Uh, here is Chris Sims' release, Gary. You want to take a close look at it. Yeah, you, you want to get this thing out of your hand, in and out of your hand. There's the release cock look. There's the five-step drop. He gets it under one, under two seconds, excuse me. There's the deep crossing route under three. And this one looks around, looks around, and still right in the three-second package. When they don't blitz, Chris Sims, that offensive line is giving him time to throw the ball. OU spreads the field. Three receivers to the right. And right will run it. And Johnson unloads on him. The freshman number 11 said, let me take him on. And that's why, folks, they're talking about him in the same breath with one, dare I say, Tommy Novus. There he is right there, number 11. The other number 11. He's trying to shadow Quentin Griffin. On the way to shadow one guy, he drills the quarterback. Second down and Look at that front. Now the horn's back out. Didi trying to get there. Down the sideline, out of bounds, incomplete. That was Brooks on the ball, but he was out of bounds. See, there's that deep safety that Babers had behind him. The State Fair of Texas in the background. 
And we've had a lot of big plays, but none bigger than that blocked field goal by Andre Wolfolk. And then on the option, look, Quentin Griffin for the touchdown. The only touchdown of the game. 9.40 left in the third. Shotgun look, Jason White. He replaced the injured Nate Hibble. Time, couldn't find a receiver. Now he's scrambling. Off to the right, he can throw it incomplete. It will go down at the 18-yard line. And OU is forced to punt. And folks, don't be surprised if Texas doesn't come after one of these punts. Well, that time, the Texas secondary did such a great job. Even though White was scrambling from side to side, they never came off their coverage. They never broke down in their discipline. And that's what made Jason White have to eat that ball. Thornton shaking up on the play. Nope, off. The Gunners are all alone on the outside. Eight on the line for Texas. Oh, you are counting for him. Great protection. They set the return. And it's a beautiful punt by Ferguson. He drives the horns back to the 30-yard line. What a weapon. Jeff Ferguson is a 52-yard punt. ABC Sports Presentation of College Football brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Original Coors, nothing beats an original. Morgan Stanley, formerly Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money, get well connected, and FedEx. Shipping at FedEx.com. It's fast, easy, and it just got cheaper. Now, there's a big Texan, folks. Here's Thornton being tended to on the uh, on the sideline. Sims will come back to work again against this sensational Oakland de Oklahoma defense. Play fake, split hard left, fire complete, and the go-to guy is becoming B.J. Johnson rather than Roy Williams. Williams has been quiet for a long time for Sims, a very long time. Four catches in the first quarter for uh, Roy Williams is all he had. And Chris Sims, look at him in the first half. Look how he used the full field all over every box. Everything is covered right there. That's a good distribution of play calling and a quarterback that attacks the whole field. That's a pass off. And Wolfolk has gone one on one with Williams outside to the right. Nothing doing. OU swallows the rushing game. John, uh, how about Michigan? They're running it up on Penn State, my friend. You've got that one right. The Coors Light update. It was close for a time, but they scored late at halftime. And then Michigan comes back early in the third quarter. John Navarre, 53 yards to Ronald Bellamy, who could not have been more wide open with two guys covering him. 20 to nothing is the lead. Hey, John, before the day's over, tell me how Indiana got 63 on my buddy Alvarez in Wisconsin today. That was a stunning number. Third down. Here's Sims. Empty. Complete. And Sloan Thomas out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Very close to the uh, mark for the first down on this side. We'll see what uh, what they've got here on this third down. Officials timeout. They'll bring the chains across the field on this one. It's going to be a very, very big measurement right here. This is not a place where you want to be gambling on a, on a fourth down and short. 7-13 in the third. We've had only one touchdown. So inches. And uh, they're not going to gamble. No, that you be. just you just cannot do that. And Mac Brown knows it in a game like this. It would just kill you to turn it over there. And the running game has not been automatic. Well, neither now, they have practiced fake punts, but I got to tell you, I own the baby. No, I watched I them practice so. it, but I don't <laughs> think so either. It's not a place to be doing that. Number 12. There's the up back. He's the man that would take the direct snap if they want to go for it. Thomas is looking in from the opposite side at him. You bet. Good Bradford hangs one out of there. 
beautifully, and Fagan is hit at the 13 and down right there. So it is Bradford doing an excellent job of punting for Texas. 7-3, OU leads it. Well, the network's down. Bagel. And bagels. Blow for bagels. Hey, guys, can I come? We're getting bagels. OK. Network's down. Is it bagel? OK. Need a reliable network that keeps everything working? SBC. We're on it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow, all right? Lunch is over. Buy a Coors Light? Sold. Sold? Now, that's music to this banker's ears. Listen, I've already offered a lot more than this little bar is worth. I'm not selling. Build your condos around us. I don't get it. What makes this dive so special? This bar's packed every night with people who love the Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Rocky Mountain Cold? Whatever. Hey, move to Colorado. <laughs> I want this place. Nobody's gonna stop me. Not you or your beer. Bartow. The Duke? I'll ask the questions. What time is it? T time for me to leave. And? Coors Light's on me. Here you go. <laughs> okay. I had that coming. Next round's on the Duke. Like heck yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. I took care of the spark plugs, flushed the coolant, the brakes were shot, so I went ahead and took care of those, greased and lubed it, cleaned out the injectors, replaced the air filter, the fuel filter, rotated the tires, and changed the oil. Thanks, honey. More ASC certified master technicians, the top mechanics in the country, use Valvoline motor oil in their own cars over any other oil. Did you take out the garbage? Sure did. Separated bottles from cans. One of the bags was leaking, so I double bagged that. And uh, the roof's gonna need some work. I can get to that next week. ABC Sunday. The show Entertainment Weekly calls the best new drama is now the season's number one new drama. An all-new alias, ABC Sunday, 9, 8 Central. So Oklahoma with Jason White backed up inside their 15-yard line. 7.04 left in the third. Throws high, complete the Miriam to the 20-yard line. Tyrone Jones making the stop. Well, we talked about what these two teams like to do, and you can see as it unfolded, Texas right here has not been able to establish any running attack. It's forced them to throw more of the passes, which is okay. But look at this, 10 finesse plays. That is not the way they wanted to do it. Oklahoma doing right about what they want to in this football game, except scoring points. Second down and four for the Sooners. Jason again rolling hard to the right. On the run. Oh, what a collision at the 28-yard line. A penalty flag is down. The tight end Smith was working over there. Nathan Basher popped him. The referee is John Laurie. We did have holding on the defense. That's a tough one. That's an automatic first. You can see as how Oklahoma has changed their game plan to try to adjust to this Texas offense. There's the hold on the tight end right there, right in front of the official. Holding defense, spot, Call the spade. Everett Rawls, the outside linebacker, was the one who had the tight end that time, Trent Smith. More of a rollout, play action pass, bootleg package in there with White trying to free up from those blitzing linebackers, those stunning guys inside that Texas is having a tough time getting the ball away from. Griffin's out of the game right now. So, Ronaldo works, the sophomore from Tulsa. He's a running back for the Sooners. <laughs> On the release, he paid a price. Fagan did. And so, too, did the quarterback as Tyrone Jones drove in on top of him that time and Corey Redding there also on the hit. Well, 
that guy's not picked up at all in the design of that play. The quarterback has to release it. The linemen are trying to get out in front of that screen, that wide receiver screen, and the quarterback, you said it right, has to get rid of it quickly and still take punishment. Second down and nine. This game, folks, is for men only. This has been a heavy hitter today. Griffin, nothing doing. Lost yardage on it. Reading again, and let's send you to John Saunders for an update on the Irish. They finally get a breakthrough. Brent trying to avoid going 0-4 for the first time in school history. Carlisle Holiday at quarterback. Busts it up, breaks a couple of tackles, and then into the open field for the touchdown. 67 yards for the Irish led 17 to 7, and they knock off Pitt this afternoon to go to 1 and 3, 24 7, the final. Brent. All right, John, and here it is 7 3, Oklahoma ahead of Texas. Third down and 10. Hit by Johnson. Diving catch first down, Smith. I don't think so. No, they wave it off. Yep. The official said it was on the ground. That was a nice play by Smith. He laid out White because of the blitz inside. Had to get out of the pocket. Threw it, kind of a jump pass, and the ball skipped. Yeah. I thought it did. And that was yeah. a nice try. That was a good try. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that rascal tried. He made it look good on the short yeah, huh? That's right. Yes, indeed. Who's going to make the big mistake? That's what it looks like this game is going to come down to. One big mistake because both defenses are dominant. All right, Jeff Ferguson. Eight men in burnt orange trying to get there. Gets off another beauty. Drives Casher in the 23. Slips one, but not. The next two, and Rocky Kalmus makes the stop for the special teams. You talk about a player who's the leading candidate for the Butkus. There he is right there, Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, Gary Gibson, the Oklahoma Sooners, had lost four in a row against Texas in 1993. Cale Gundy, despite a problem with his hip, rushed for three touchdowns, passed for 111 yards with just one INT, and Oklahoma upset Texas 38-17. And there's Gundy on that OU sideline. Helping out with the coaching staff. Victor Ike is now in at running back. Victor Ike is the running back for the Horns. Play fake to him. Sims waits deep middle. Sims goes for Williams. Jump ball. Wolfolk is there and knocked it away. What a move by the OU coaching staff to move number 17 to corner. And he's been assigned to Roy Williams. And he's done a knockout job here today. This ball was thrown very late. Very late, very high. Wolfolk just watched this ball. It was hanging up forever. You see Jones has to stop. And Wolfolk, and that's where that receiving experience comes through. Sims, who gets rocked as he let it go. The ball hung. And that one, Wolfolk will gobble up. They gotta get the ball to Roy Williams. Oh. They must find a way to How it. good is it to have the size of Wolfolk on the jumping ability of Williams? He's on him again. Sims looks in that direction, throws high and incomplete. And they have locked down on Williams. He stopped on his pattern that time. And Wolfolk right now, ladies and gentlemen, has got him in his hip pocket. Zone coverage, main coverage. Hand coverage, zone coverage. Mike Stoops has given it all to him. Chris Sims. Lehman fooled a couple times, lost him an interception. One time it was a dropped interception, but you can see he's never letting the quarterback get comfortable. This is one drive that the Longhorn coaches would like to have back. Third down and ten. They wish they'd put it on the ground here for at least one running play. They've got to slot out the Sims left. Linebackers show their coming Williams, but it's stopped. Williams and Lehman, it was a safety blitz that time. We've got an OU player shaken up. He's down at the 20-yard line. Now he's up. He's okay. It was Williams. He was coming hard on a safety blitz. Had to be just a legal procedure on that. But what? Yes, it was legal procedure because it looked like everybody moved but maybe the center on that time. Well, I'm going to tell you, Williams was coming hard. He was coming from the right side of the defense. 
And they were doing it with that zone blitz, Brent. Just bring a safety, bring a linebacker, and play zone behind it, which is very difficult to pick up these third and longs. Third and 15. This is helping field position for OU. They have backed the horns up to the 16-yard line. This is not what the coaches wanted. They don't want to be thrown in this situation. Got to hurry up. Kalmus can't get there. They throw underneath as Kalmus vacates the spot. But it's well short of the first down. That was Robin coming out as Kalmus slipped trying to blitz. But Texas forced the punt, but they do pick up a few for field position. See, here's the blitz inside. But watch these guys back here. And that's what the Texas coaches are seeing. See, yeah, all right, I'll blitz you. I've only got two or three guys underneath instead of the regular allotment of four or five. But on third and long, we'll give you that little dump off because we got great speed to come up and make the play. Who will make the first mistake? Now it's OU's turn to tee off. They jumped in the middle. There's the penalty flag. OU appeared to be offside. This is Fagan. In at the 39-yard line. OU was offside. That will not give Texas a first down. This was a fourth down and eight situation. This will not give the Horns a first down. Offside side defense. Well, folks, it's time for our Pacific Life game summary. And as you watch Bob Stoops, many of you are thinking because you've asked. Will he go to the NFL? Because of the great job that he has done at Oklahoma, will he move on? Well, he told us last week at Norman, I don't feel it's my venue. There are too many things outside of a coach's control. So Jerry Jones, don't bother to call. He's happy up there. And, oh, I don't want to put the heat on the boys down here. 7-3, OU with the lead now. And uh, that was great coverage on that punt. So yeah. they'll just let them take the ball right there and put it in play and with 322. With the, yeah, with the game breakers that Oklahoma has, if you make a mistake, guy gets a big return, block a punt, you might as well just give Oklahoma the ball. Your defense has been dialing well. A turnover. Texas needs a turnover in field position. Let's see if they can dial one up. Now Griffin's back in and running back. This has been high pressure intense from the first snap. There's the blitz. Inside, shovel pass. Griffin to the 40-yard line. A perfect call as Rolls came from his linebacking spot. And into that vacated spot came the pitch from Jason White. 18 yards. Where was Derek Johnson? Number 11. He's been shadowing Griffin the whole game. That time, he takes his eye off him for just an instant. And Mangino and Long have the right call on and perfectly executed for the Actually, the second time in the game that Griffin's got a fourth down play in this game. During the 17-game winning streak, this coaching staff of Oklahoma has been lethal. They've got to smell it in this drive. You're not going to get any chances as Texas pulls in. And there's number 11 yep. back in on the stop that time. Young Derek Johnson out of Waco, Texas. Same high school as Vince Carter. The OU freshman center plays. And uh, so here's a reminder. And uh, folks, here's something you might enjoy Monday night. Marshall Falk going to be mic'd up. So Falk and the amazing Rams offense when they face the Lions. I don't think anybody can beat the Rams when they play like they did last week. I mean, weren't they awesome against Miami? That was unbelievable. Second down and 14. White's got great time. What a great job on the offensive line. Short of the first down, Mark Clayton, the young man from Arlington, Texas. There's 40 players on that Oklahoma roster from the state of Texas. And they're scattered all around the Big 12. The big one, of course, Colorado over Kansas State. And uh, Baylor battles Texas A&M and only loses by six. A lot closer than a whole lot of folks expected. And we got night action. You can't beat the Big 12 this year, ladies and gentlemen. This is the best conference in the land. These are two of the finest teams. And we'll come back to Dallas for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship. Now Jason O'Reilly fires complete for a first down. Antoine Savage. Texas makes a mistake. One of the few mistakes. Quentin Griffin goes wide on a little... 
escape right here, Griffin goes, and watch two Texas guys go with him to vacate that spot. Griffin goes wide, two guys go with him. That's a mistake, watch. This guy and this guy go with one guy. That opens the spot right there, bang. Good read by the quarterback, a mistake on Texas, and a first down. That last defensive series by OU started it all. They got decent field position. They've had better field position in this game. Running to the right, he's going to keep it this time, spins away, and he's out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Redding tried to close in on him, and Jason White doing a brilliant job. That was a run all the way. It was going to be a quarterback draw, but because of the blitz, he just had to get out of there. The receivers downfield were all blocking. There's no one to throw to. White just has to keep the ball and make something out of nothing. It's Mover. That rushing number doesn't do it justice for us. In college football, for some strange reason, they take sack yardage off the rushing total. He's been a much better runner than that here today. Second down and three. Griffin tripped up and down at the 20, short of the first down. Jones. Next week, a doubleheader. The big one. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy will be in Tallahassee. What's wrong with the Seminoles? And then next Saturday, we'll go see Barry Alvarez, Gary Danielson. We'll have to talk to Barry. <laughs> and then some of you know what's, will watch that one. 63 to Indiana. I think I'm going to visit Ohio State. No, that's where I was going. <laughs> Third down and one. Straight ahead. First down. That's going to take it right to the end of the third quarter, too. Those three, those play calls for Texas last time when they did not run the ball one time, really caught them behind the down and distance, and Oklahoma will go to the fourth quarter. Player of the game right there. Absolutely. He came through. He's come through big time. Jason White, a replaced Nate Hibble, Mark Mangino, one of their outstanding offensive coordinators, working with Chuck Long. The Sooners, they lead it, and they're threatening. Our score is 7-3. We'll be back for the fourth quarter of the SBC Red River Shootout after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Excuse me, can you take Timmy to tuba practice? No problem. Hey, hey, mister. Battle of Gettysburg? No problem. Can you take me to the truck, please? No problem. Dodge Caravan. It offers an exclusive power rear hatch. Hey, my pony. And 972 seating configurations. We have got to cut costs, people. Ideas. We could open an account on FedEx.com, save 10% on online express shipping. Okay, how about this? We open an account on FedEx.com. We save 10% on online express shipping. Uh, that is wonderful. You just said the same thing I said, only you did this. No, I did this. Mm. Makes all the difference. Bingo. Yeah, that's good. Right on the nose. Yeah, that's really good. Good. Mm -hmm. Last Tuesday, all of America had the same reaction to Bob Patterson. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayers. Or something like that. Bob Patterson, Tuesday at 9, 8 central on ABC. gives you a hand and a lot more online. See, Bank of Oklahoma's website turns your desktop into your own personal bank. Apply for loans or mortgages, pay bills, open accounts, trade online, even view and download your account history. It's not distance, it's a direct relationship. So now bank digitally. And with BOK's totally free checking and free Visa check card, we're even more convenient. So more than ever, you're better off at BOK. See Jeff Cunningham weekends on Eyewitness News. One.
one thing is certain. Whoever loses this game is still a real good football team. Brent, the, these two teams, have, and I hesitate to say this, I mean, they are good football teams. They're making mistakes, but no big mistake in this exactly. game. And you know what? what's coming through for me is Oklahoma is battle-tested. They're used to these big games. They're not going to crack. Texas is going to have to rip it from them. Can they stop the Sooners who are in the red zone? Remember, number 22 scored six times a year ago in that route against the Horns. Today, he has scored the game's only touchdown, but it has OU ahead. 7-3. Mangum with the Horns on the board. With that field goal, he did have one blocked from 35 yards. Now it is second down and nine. Jason White, the sophomore backup quarterback from Tuttle, Oklahoma, replaced the injured Nate Hibble in the first half. He led them on their only scoring drive. Ran the option himself. Straight back. Waits. And Adam Smith, the tight end, working on that side. And Quentin Jammer, the corner, couldn't peel it away. How about that? Tight end against one of the best corners in college football. Right there, what happens is Smith gives him a pressure release. Goes upfield and then just pushes off with his left arm. A perfect throw. Jammer's right there. But White put it high enough for the big tight end to get it. I love that matchup of tight end. Not against Jammer, but against the strong safety. They got it again. All 11 men for Texas are near the line of scrimmage. Here's your third down. Everybody's up there. They got to stop him or on the pitch. Griffin for the pin. Got it. Out of bounds. There's a first and goal for O. Enough for the first down, and that could be the killer right there because OU would have settled for the field goal. The option play and the movement of Jason White has changed the game. Here it is. He had to pitch quickly this time. Now you get Griffin out in space. You're not going to catch him. You can't pull him down with one arm right there. See? Get to the corner, and now Oklahoma first and goal from the three. Texas must only give up a field goal here. Need a stop. Chris Tony is the blocking fullback. They show power to the left. Now they move it over to the right. Neil toss Griffin. Griffin tries to get a block from Tony. Can't. And the Longhorn defense with Jones. Pressure. Tyrone Jones, the senior from Texas City. He's been a good, good defensive player for the yeah, Horns here today. And as he filled out, we went and watched practice. He's like 245 now. You he bet. came in 210. All right, the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. This is a Red River shootout. For the first time since 84, these two great schools are ranked in the top five. OU, the defending national champions, with the 12th play on this drive. Got that matchup at tight end again. Small corner on a big tight end. White adjusts his money back. Law for the end zone incomplete. Mark Clayton couldn't quite find it in time. He was searching for it. Jason White called an audible that time. He brought in Trent Smith, the tight end, as an extra protector. He called the audible, the fade to the inside receiver, kind of a wheel route. The ball was just a bit high, a little long, and Clayton could not find it. Here's your third down. Big stop for Texas defense. Keep it a seven-point game with a field goal. And Gino may want a timeout. He does. He takes it. Man, Gino won the timeout. Can't make a mistake down here. Magino knows this is a killer. Don't make a mistake. Time out. Hey, you want to switch? Sure. Introducing the all-new Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that switches from an SUV to a pickup. Good idea. Chevy Avalanche. Like a rock. Hey, 
back on your feet after all that work you missed. Yeah, good thing my supplemental insurance kicked in. Supple what? Half flat. Well, even the best health insurance doesn't give you cash to cover things like lost pay or other expenses. This does. What does? Half flat. Oh, sorry, buddy. What? Anyway, ask about it at work. <clears throat> Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. Ask about what? Aflac! There was no running back more fun to watch than Barry Sanders. He'd stop dead in his tracks and go backwards. He'd spin away from tacklers and go sideways. And yeah, he also moved forward for about 15,269 yards. Hey, nothing beats an original. Original Coors, brewed with Rocky Mountain water. Original Coors. Nice handoff. <laughs> Access denied, but I need those graphs for the meeting. You just go to Plan B. Plan B. What's Plan B? I don't know what Plan B is. Tell me. What is Plan B? As you can see from Mr. Stinsmullen and Mr. Nemily, uh, the last couple of years were well below estimates. But this year, we expect to grow enormously. Any questions? Reliable remote access, so you won't need a Plan B. SBC. We're on it. Marshall Fox sparks the Ram offensive machine. The Lions look to new QB Ty Detmer to get them in gear. Rams, Lions, Monday Night Football at 9, 6 Pacific on ABC. Bevo paying close attention. Here comes third down and goal. So too many of those Bevo barbecues up in Norman. Stop them. So here we are. Third and eight. White goes again to the corner. Incomplete. And OU will send Duncan onto the field. Texas alignment that time almost forced Oklahoma. Look at this. Ten guys on defense for Texas are on one side of the field. Here's a one-on-one -on, -one on the other side of the field. Oklahoma, no choice. We got to throw the fade. You're forcing us to throw the fade. We do it. Neighbors is ready for it. The ball's a little outside. Clayton can't catch up. A 24-yarder. He missed from 42. Remember, he hit the late one. That was the one he made last week against K-State. This one in the air, no go. He's missed again, and Texas very much alive. Well, we said stopping them on this play was this hit right here. D.D. Lewis, remember at the very top of our broadcast, D.D. Lewis shook his head and said, not today, not today. And that tackle could have kept Texas in the game. And now it is up to young Chris Sims. The horns go empty. Roy Williams going to come and went after the loose ball. They put it down, so it'll be second down. So a little antsy back there. No time for that. Brent, one of the things I did notice about Oklahoma, every one of their defenders went over and touched Duncan. Said, it's all right, hang in there. You'll get the next one. Oklahoma is battle-tested. They're used to playing in these games. Well, Texas still indicating there's a manpower problem with OU again. Another late substitution, and they're going to have to call a timeout. <laughs> And it Devorich, was their last one. Dvorak didn't get on the field in time, and they were short in the defensive line. Oklahoma uses their last timeout in this half in the game, unless they go overtime. So the substitution packages, that has hurt OU defensively. They've used two of their three. Adjusting to defense. Remember the defensive backfield, right. they had a man uncovered and they called the timeout. Now they didn't have 11 men on the field and, and that could kill you in a, in a tight game. And I'm not so sure, Brett, it was the Borchek that shouldn't have been in there. Five wide receivers for Texas. He just ran out there because they only had 10 guys. 
Well, at the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Now, I want to go back to the big story on number four of Texas, Roy Williams. He had four catches today for 54 yards, and folks, all four were in the first quarter of this football game. He has a cut of ball since about the five-minute mark of the first quarter because Andre Wolfolk has done such a great job. Now they try to align their formation to get him some daylight. Second down and long. Sims hit on the release. And that time Jimmy Wilkerson, and there's a penalty flag. Yeah, that was roughing the passer right there. And it was Anderson, number 89. Quick pass here. Watch Sims throw it. Wilkerson from one side, Anderson from the other side. <laughs> he tries. Actually, Wilkerson kind of knocked him into him here, and Anderson, I couldn't help but do it. You know what you want to do is your alignment, drop your hands down to your sides and hold he them back. Tried to. They just try to, you know, hit him with the belly, yep. and then and then maybe his energy was in on him, and the official had no choice but the hands up. It was that late. Yeah, he hit him, but I agree with you, Gary. I think that Wilkerson pushed him back to him. Now it's first down. Sims will try to keep it going. Williams has straight this time. Roy Williams is off the Sims right. They throw that flanker screen, and it's Johnson slips, and out of bounds. That's such a tough play down the sideline. You know, you really don't have your eyes on the sideline. The guy's still running, Johnson's running, and you hit him and catch him at the same time because you know you don't want to pick up another 15-yarder. First and 10 is brought to you this corner by Chevy Trucks. Still plenty of time. You know, there is no reason for the Longhorn coaches to panic. They got 12 minutes here. That's time for running games and anything you want to do. And Victor Wright is on the field. They're going to keep it in the air. Here's Ike. Nothing new is his drill by Wolfolk again, who's had a monster game. And now it is third and long, and Ike not getting up. And we have an official timeout on the field. The Stoops defense was forced to put their safeties last week because of option football against Kansas State at the line of scrimmage. This game, Everidge and Williams have been playing deep in the secondary on passing situations, and Wolfolk's been that wild card, lining up everywhere, playing zone and main. I didn't learn much from Dick Vermeil because he was so much smarter than I am. But I'll tell you one thing the old coach used to say all the time. Never, ever abandon your running game in a situation like this. You've got to keep them honest with a, with a running game. And uh, Texas, Texas has run for 41 yards. They've had 18 yards in sacks, 23 yards total rushing, 41 yards from 18, 23 yards for Texas. That's not going to do it. Remember, Mac Brown has never lost a game when he's rushed for more than his opponent. And remember what the coaches at Texas told yep. us in Austin. If Oklahoma makes you one-dimensional, they'll kill you with this defense. Well, they've made Texas basically one-dimensional here today. And that's where I say that Oklahoma front four is underrated. You know, we talked about Harris as being the special player, but who those guys up there? Refuse to be blocked. Jimmy Wilkerson, Heineke, Dvorak, and Corey Klein. They have really stood up strong, and that Texas offensive line that's so big, so strong, has not been able to push them back. A story in the game that you really don't obviously see. They had a 17-game winning streak for the Sooners. They win their seventh national championship, and you've seen today why. And Mac Brown trying to get over the hump, win a big one against Bob Stoops, who just doesn't lose big games. And uh, he's ahead right now, 7-3, and the officials are trying to get things sorted out here at the 12-13 mark. Remember now, this is going to be a third and seven. So you can expect Sims Roy to Williams. put it up for the 34th time here today. Here's Roy Williams right here. Here's Wolfolk right there. But he has help. No, he does it this time. In the middle. Now Sims is back underneath. He's got Williams. Williams. And they hang on for a first down to 45 straight. 
So a first down for Texas as Roy Williams catches his first pass since the opening quarter. Sims and the Horns bring it out to the 45. Oklahoma with the game's only touchdown scored by Quentin Griffin. It is 7-3 OU. Draw play. Nothing doing. Tommy Harris, the freshman tackle all over Brett Robbins. Tommy Harris just abused Robbie Doan that, Doan that time, number 71. Spun off. Remember, a true freshman playing defensive line in a big-time game like this. So impressive. Second down and 12. And he's from where, Brent? Tommy Harris? Tommy Harris is from Texas. <laughs> Never ask a question unless you know the answer. Second down. They pick up Williams on the safety blitz. And Sims dives toward the first down marker. We'll see where they spot that ball. As Roy Williams came on a safety blitz. And he may have injured his leg. He's getting up a little gimpy. Number 38 is shaken up. Will he stay in the game? He's looking toward the sideline. Brett Robin, number 25. Is that him? Yes, it is. A backup. That's the guy who picked it up. And Sims, remember we talked in the open? Does Phil Sims have it? Chris Sims, excuse me. Does Chris Sims have it? Well, right there, he's showing it like Phil. I was going to tie that in somewhere. All right, third down is short now. This is a big one for Texas. Here comes Williams. He's stuck. Stoned in the hole by Oklahoma. But where will they spot it? The spot is critical. Brandon Moore, number 46, stoned him, and I think they gave the spot to Texas. I the OU coaches are living. I he thought may he have got had to it. the line. I thought he got to the line. He may have had it. Yes, I really do think he got right to the line. Where did he spot the ball? Right on the line. And that's right where our yellow line is. So everything happened right there. Come on, yellow line, don't fail me now. <laughs> <laughs> you know everything. Everybody met right there. Oh, I'm telling you, it's been that kind of a day, folks. If you just join yeah, us, it's like a traffic signal on a busy street. You never want to run a yellow one. Nope, no, 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 that's it. No, that's it. Bad. Okay. You know something else? I can't remember a game in which fans stay glued to their seats the way they have this one, folks. Every snap has been full of passion. Fury. I, I, tell you, I mean, it's just been a whale of a football game. That First block down. by Brett Robin, fourth string running back on great, Roy right? Williams, and Chris Sims taking that dive. Play of the game for Texas. Okay. They're now at the Sooners 45. Here's Chris. Got a man. First skate. For about eight yards on that first down with Andre Wolfolk making the stop. Chris Sims so cool now. He's taken all the abuse. Fans wanted Major. Major Applewhite, holder of all those Texas records. Chris Sims with all the headlines. Covers of all the magazines. He wanted into a game like this. Well, he's into a game like this, and he's got the football in his hand. Now, Ivan Williams. Right behind Sims, and now they come back with a running play, and a stop at the 34-yard line by Tommy Harris, number 97. Gee, that was he one of the best-looking yes. freshmen you've ever yes. seen. one of the best-looking football players I've ever seen. He had his helmet knocked off. That's why they didn't call it a penalty. And grabbed the foot, just one hand, grabbed the foot of the running back. Watch him right there. He gets blocked pretty well here. Loses the helmet, and watch him reach up. One foot with his right hand. That was an unbelievable tackle. So short drop. Williams, he underthrew him straight to the defensive back. And it's time for our Pacific Life game summary. Remember now, the Sooners would have a bigger lead. But they have missed two field goals in this game. Duncan in a slump. And he's missed two. And so the score stands at 7-3. What a goal line stand for Texas, huh? First and goal inside, what, two and a half, two-yard line? 
no points for Oklahoma. Second down and 10. He's a short drop. Batted down and incomplete. Jimmy Wilkerson from Omaha, Texas, makes the play. It's such a tough play for a quarterback because both receivers are running out routes at five yards, and the defensive line reads that block. They read that offensive guy going for his ankles. There's Wilkerson. He's going to be right there. But watch receivers. They just go out like that. There's no one else to throw to. The tight end comes out. The slot goes out. And Wilkerson times it and says, I know you're going to throw the quick one. I'm just going to throw it. Open out the Texas with two plays to get 10 yards. Field goal doesn't do him any good. They need 10 for a first down. Here's your third down. Sims. Deep in zone. Intercepted. Oklahoma intercepts in the end zone. And Tonnell Perkins, the redshirt freshman from Lawton, Oklahoma. Antonio Perkins, the nickel back. Have come in. They're going to see it. Texas is going to run seeds. Slot guy, all four seeds. Chris tries to look off. He says, I got it one on one. Let's put it up and see what happens. Throws a duck. Threw a duck. He misfired on the throw, and that allowed Perkins to get there. Look at how fast. Perkins came from behind, and that ball was poorly thrown, and that allowed Perkins to make the play. There was heat on Chris from behind. I didn't see that. Did he get hit? Throw. Did he get hit? Oh, there that, was that intense it. heat coming. Right. I saw I was at my eyes downfield. I saw the ball just flutter, and that's what allowed it. Now first down. And Quentin Griffin will try to take it over for a couple of yards, and Johnson hits him right now, along with Rawls. Plenty of time left yeah. in this game. And here's the tough thing for Oklahoma right here. As we go back to the last play. Second down and eight is our situation. Near to 7-3 game. Let me go with my original thought here, Greg. This is where Oklahoma has problems, controlling the clock. They only have really one style of game, and that's to throw the ball. Let's see if the quarterback, White, can give them some extra runs with his legs. Throws to Griffin underneath. He slips the first tackle, but not Rawls. Rawls comes in hard to clean it up. Texas defense is impressive. We talked about Oklahoma being so fast and moving to the ball. Texas has a defense now just like that. I mean, you put the ball out in the flat, and 11 guys are buzzing towards it. I'm going to tell you, folks, it may come down to Jeff Ferguson again, and he'll boom one. He's a monster punter for OU. They'd love to get a first down out of Jason White in the offense right here, but what do they dare do? Texas is going to come at him. Texas is coming at him. How high a risk will they take? White's going to sprint for it. He's got a shot at it. White steps out of bounds at the marker. First down, Oklahoma. He sends White's legs. That is the difference in this game. As he responded, I don't know if I've seen a backup quarterback respond to an injury in a bigger game and do what Jason White has. He's 14 for 19. He's ran the option on fourth and one to pick it up. He ran the quarterback draw, and there, with the blitz coming, he dodged Johnson, maybe the best defensive player on the field, and picks up the first down. You got a little Derrick Johnson. He ain't so little either. No. Big Derrick Johnson on the inside and stepped around into the outside. And here's your first down for the Sooners. Clock inside a seven now. Inside shuttle to Griffin. And Rawls can't bring him down. And Griffin breaks the tackle and makes it to the 35-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Burger King, home of the Whopper. SBC were on it. And original Coors, nothing beats an original. State Fair of Texas. A lot of folks are going to spill out to that midway. Spill some dollars, millions it means to the Dallas economy. This game here. White is back. Facing pressure. He'll take it off again for another first down. Slides. 
the midfield. He's at the 50-yard line. And Jason White, the runner, is beating Texas. That's a 15-yard run. Well, D.D. Lewis got Jason White just as he slide there. This was not, this was not a quarterback draw. But as Quinton Griffin went out, three Texas players, you can't see one just out of the screen, went with him. Another busted assignment from Texas. They've only made a couple. Watch as he slides. D.D. Lewis puts it out of him, and the Oklahoma bench just erupted. But remember, the rules are a little different in college football than professional football. That would be a penalty in professional ball. No time for minutes. Stay tuned for the Trippy Carvana postgame report. We'll have scores and highlights from around the country. Oklahoma, 5.52 to go. At midfield, the toss. Griffin, the corner, cuts. Battles his way to the 46-yard line. D.D. Lewis bringing him down, and we check in with John Saunders. Brent, you asked the question, how did Indiana put up that number of points against Wisconsin? One reason, they couldn't stop the run. LeBron Williams, 56 yards, one of his six touchdowns, 449 yards rushing for Indiana alone, 63-32, the most Wisconsin has given up since 1890. Oh, my. The running game. Who would have figured that? Five minutes now. Texas has all three timeouts, remember. Here's second down. White tosses for another first down. This backup quarterback put it in the hands of Antoine Savage and Jason White leading the Sooners right down the field. Brent, I'm going to defer to you on this one. I, you've been at it longer than I am. Have you ever seen a quarterback come in as a backup in a bigger game and perform like this? Never. I haven't either. This time, under pressure. Five minutes to go in the game. He hung in the pocket, was patient, found the right guy. Texas now is kind of chasing their tail a bit now, Brent. They just are running for guys. They're losing their poise. If I'm Kyle Reese, I would blitz. I'd say grab a man, blitz, and let's go for it because the zone is breaking down. Sooners inside the 35. Jason sprints away again. Jason twists toward that first down marker and Corey Redding. Check in with Jack and Ruth. Well, Brent, one of the things that Jason White has going for him is a very talented group of receivers. Last year, Oklahoma threw for a total of 289 completed passes. Returning players on the sidelines and on that OU team accounted for all but 13 of those receptions. Second down and one. Today, it is Jason White, the runner with the option look, right straight ahead. I think now Texas will have to stop Oklahoma and use their timeouts. They're gonna to have to get a stop here and use their timeouts. Matt Brown thinking of the strategy. They can't give up any more time and they have to start thinking of the clock to come back in this game. White's last four runs, ladies and gentlemen, for 10 yards, 15 yards, 9 yards, and 2 yards for a first down. A magnificent he effort. He timeouts. He didn't have any. He's got to get in there. He might well take a five-yard penalty. That it's not the, the worst thing in the world. There it is. It's a good thing this is in basketball. That would have been a technical. It's a good thing Chris Weber. Uh, <laughs> Us people from Michigan remember that one. <laughs> Who can ever forget it? <laughs> That's a bad feeling. You go and turn around and call timeout. The ref says, sorry. <laughs> right. And Quentin Griffin says, get in there, man. But we don't have any timeout. In this situation, five yards is not the worst thing in the world. Time is a huge factor now. First and 15, they want to kill 310. Second down coming up. The ball has not been spotted yet. The 25 second clock has not started. Here it goes. Let's see. 
Oklahoma should snap this ball real close to the end of the clock. Here's White. Hit on the release, deflected, and almost intercepted by Jammer off the deflection. He went diving for it that time. Oklahoma has to do what Oklahoma does. They throw the ball. They drop back in the pocket. You see him white right there. His feet moving, throws the ball, gets pushed into right and right through the hand of the receiver. Who was that? The receiver that time. Mark Clayton, number nine. Went right through his hand. That was a decent throw. Third down and 221. Protection, can't find anybody. Now throws in zone, incomplete. And it is fourth down, and now what will Stoops do? His field goal kicker has misfired twice today. This would be a long one. Do you pooch punt it and play field position at the two-minute mark? There's Duncan. Missed a 42 and a 24-yarder in six of his last seven. And this would be what about 45 44 yards they're gonna pooch it aren't they no they're gonna try to kick it now the quarterback jason white remembers the holder if a direct snap they could pooch it instead they could go for the 45 yarder there it is the pooch punt off the line up and right What was Basher doing? It was headed for the end zone. Oh, my. We said maybe someone will make a big mistake. Is that the big mistake? Still plenty of time left. 2.06, Texas has their timeouts left, all three of them. Chris Sims, 97 yards away. Timeout. Play Cash is King at Burger King for your chance to become a millionaire. First class, baby. Hey, how much for that dog? What's up, dog? Who wants to marry a millionaire? <laughs> this is not what I had planned. Play Cash is King at Burger King. Peel for a chance at great prizes. From hot, tasty food like a Whopper or Croissant Sandwich to a cool million bucks. With a one in three chance to win, the odds are on your side. Pardon me, would you happen to have some extra ketchup? <laughs> Change for a dollar? Sure. Introducing the all-new Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that changes from an SUV to a pickup. Thanks. Chevy Avalanche. Like a rock. Okay, good news. That broadband thing we all want? Got it figured out. Honey, you call the phone company. Tracy, you're digging the trench. Shovel's in the garage. I'm going up on the roof to assess the satellite possibilities. Jimmy, check out these schematics. Appreciate it. Let's go! Run it! We know how you feel. And that's why Circuit City offers one-stop high-speed internet access. You can find what's available where, compare options, and arrange installation. Circuit City, we're with you. Yeah, we can get broadband at Circuit uh, City. Oh. Chris Sims and the Longhorns with a first down in the three after a mental mistake by Basher. Ball would have gone into the end zone and they could have had it on the 20. Cannot afford a mistake down here. They got 2.06 to work with. Longhorns with their timeouts left. Lehman showing blitz. There's the blitz. Touchdown, Lehman. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Williams got him on the blitz. Lehman on the pick. OU is going to win it again. Lehman bluffs. Williams gets the play. Sims backs up. 
time, Lehman shows blitz and falls off for the freebie. What a play. What a play by Roy Williams. Uh, what an effort by Williams. Duncan. The extra point. Take a look at number 38. Why he's the premier safety in the land. Over the top of the blitz protector. It flutters. And Lehman scrolls in. Oh, you rolling again. Do these guys ever lose a big game? Not today. After the 270 horsepower Chevy Trailblazer, everything else just seems kind of weak. The all new Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. There's a place where I get my favorite Italian sauces with all kinds of pastas, plus all the salad and breadsticks I want. Sounds like mom's house, but it's Olive Garden and their never ending pasta bowl for $7.95. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Tonight. You're the sleepover bandits. They're breaking into theaters for a special sneak preview. Just give us a little bit of the money. No, good manners are no excuse for criminal behavior. I'm stumped. Bandits. Rated PG-13. Starts October 12th. Sneak preview tonight. Now there's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm. More evolved skin care. Your search for the right financial partner brings you to the Pacific Life family of companies, managing more than $300 billion in assets. Discover the power of Pacific Life. This could be for a national championship. It's up. Next it to the right. Number one Miami faces Florida State next Saturday at noon Eastern on ABC. No rest for number 38, Roy Williams, back out on the kickoff team as his great effort off the blitz over the top forces the third interception of the day by Chris Sims, and Lehman picks it off, and now he, too, will come down the field as the Sooners fire their best guns. Here's Basher, who made that mistake, trying to get back for it, and he is down at the 30. One yard line. Well, someone always makes a mistake. This time it was Brett Robinson. Remember when he got Williams before with the low block? This time he goes up and cuts. You cannot cut a linebacker. When you cut a linebacker on safety and he knows you're going to do it, remember he, he did it last time, that allows him to go over the top. Sims takes a short drop. I don't know if that was an interception or a fumble. He got that ball, I thought, before he threw it that time. I want that on the cover. Of one of those magazines. What an effort by Roy Williams. First down. Here's Chris. Middle intercepted Williams. There he is again. Oh, oh man. baby. He lined up right, he forces the turnover, and now he gets the turnover. The All-American in a big game, that was a gimme that time, takes it, but he was in the perfect spot. Oklahoma has again proved its value. And I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, why was Texas favorite coming into this game? As you watch it unfold, all the big plays have been made on the other side. And here is Quentin Griffin. And the coaching staff over there from Norman, Oklahoma. Remember, remember when they had an extra week to prepare, and Stoops readily admitted it. They broke out all the Texas tapes, and they worked on the Texas plays for an entire week before they went back to thinking about Kansas State. And here they are, about to wrap up their 18th straight victory. And folks, they haven't been beating the Troy States of the world. They
They have been beating big time opponents, K State and Texas. You've got to put OU number one. They deserve to be number one. No one's knocked them off. This defense may be better than a year ago. Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. With Gary Danielson and Jack Arrude, I'm Brent Musburger. It's been a dandy. But Oklahoma has answered the call all game long. They've made the big plays. They've made the right decision. From the backup quarterback to a wonderful piece of football by number 38. And for those of you who just joined, just watch 38 from the left. Now watch number 11, Lehman, stroll in for a touchdown. It was that easy. And just moments ago, Williams, number 38 again, made the interception, and the Horns have turned it over four times here today against Oklahoma. And how big, how big does that Oklahoma-Nebraska game loom down the road in Lincoln? Well, Brent, at halftime, I said that Oklahoma is battle-tested, and you can see as this game emerged, they feel good about it. They looked up at the clock and said, we've been here before, we've been in big games, we're used to it, but I'll tell you, every guy in this team is going to go up to that backup quarterback, Jason White, and say, thank you for studying that Absolutely. game plan all week. Thank you for being ready to play and not pouting about losing the job in the fall. What a great point that is. There have been so many, so many MVPs for Oklahoma, but, but Jason White has to step in in the middle of the cauldron, right. and he does the job replacing the injured Nate Hibble. He led the Sooners on their first touchdown scoring drive of the game. So we'll come back. We'll wrap it up. Oklahoma closing in on number 18 in a row. Hank Aaron entered the 74 season one home run shy of the all-time record. Anxious fans around the country couldn't wait for him to hit his record-tying home run. And they didn't have to wait very long. He did it on opening day on his very first swing. Hey, nothing beats an original. Coors original. Brewed with Rocky Mountain water. How's that for an opener? <laughs> well, the network's down. Bagel. Yeah, bagels. Blow for bagels. Hey, guys, can I come? We're getting bagels. OK. Network's down. Bagel. Okay. Need a reliable network that keeps everything working? SBC. We're on it. The flags are back up. They're playing football again. And so and confirmation. Nathan Vassar is deep. We are back now. Oklahoma. 123 to go. They'll be punting here, bringing the clock down. Well, here's Young Basher. Guess who? Guess who? Number 38. <laughs> Listen, that's not one guy. That's got to be two. <laughs> it cannot be one player oh, we're watching there. Huh? You know, this is unbelievable. Let's see. There must be a lot of Williams on this team, right? Take Roy Williams, this. the interception and pass coverage. He's blocking on putts. He's lining up on the blitz as a strong safety coming in there. And he's also on the kickoff coverage team. The All-American earned it today. Oh, he moves up to the top of the charts for the Jim Thorpe. Well, I'm telling you, this is some great defense. And they have not been beating up on cupcakes. How many times can we say that? Sims. Throws in underneath and uh, out of bounds, stop the clock. And uh, now we got to have an asterisk. Today's Chevrolet players <laughs> of the game. We're going to go with Jason White of Oklahoma because he did such a courageous job, backup quarterback. And we'll go with D.D. Lewis for a time he saved the game with that tackle on Quentin Griffith, left it at 7-3 at in a recognition of their effort. Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each University General Scholarship Fund. But we should make a down payment on a Corvette for Roy Williams. Yeah. He'll soon he'll have Just money to kidding, pay. NCAA. <laughs> Just kidding. So none of that. Second down and four. And 
Sammy's goes down on it. Jimmy Wilkerson's played a good game. Yeah, it went down with a three-man rush that time. Final minute now. Oh, uh, Sims and the Horns right up there at the line of scrimmage. I don't think Texas believed they could get I'll shut out with their high-powered offense, but Oklahoma shuts them out. No touchdowns, just a field goal. Well, the executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. The coordinator producer, Bob Goodrich, is also producing today's game. The director down there, Larry Cam, TD, Monty Poling. Associate producer, Mitch Green. Associate director, Brian Fahey. Director of production, Bob Towns. Our production assistants, TD and Big Kurt. Stats man, Big D himself, had a home game, Anthony Holman. And, of course, the team of Hill and Mobileson keeping us it's like a law firm. It is. Here's fourth down, and uh, of course, friendly 14 3. So Sims goes from blue to white, <laughs> and is going down at the uh, 12 yard line with Corey Klein wrapping him up. And Oklahoma wins for the 18th straight time, and uh, great dejection. For, for young Sims, they had such high hopes coming into this game, but this defense and the co-defensive coordinators of the big hug and Stoops, he got a, he'll he, hug the first man. They gave him cooler, a big huh? bath yeah. over there, and uh, anybody can get his hands on, he'll hug. Look at this. Doesn't make any difference. Stoops, he's going to hug you. Well, Way to go. And I, and I think you might be right. I mean, you hug anybody in a white jersey over there today because oh, yeah. it was a team effort. Oh, when you yeah. win with a backup oh, yeah. quarterback. Now that, that takes big arms. <laughs> when you hug Mangino, uh, folks, that's a hug, okay? So they'll take a knee here, and uh, you can't say enough about Oklahoma. They set sail for back-to-back -back national championships. And I'm going to tell guys? you, it's going to take guys? a great effort to beat this team. These guys are for real all over again. Mac Brown's Texas team. Well, they'll come back and play again. They'll wind up in a good year. This is a good football team. Like I said, the loser in this game is a good team. Good luck the rest of the season. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. So it's 14-3. Stoops and OU. They'll wrap it up when we come back. The flags are back up. <laughs> 